DJ, 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 cut the music. Which doctor wake up? We live on the blue. We live on the green. We live on the purple. We are back. We are here. We are in the Monday after the NFL draft. Let me teach you how to vibe. We're here to unpack it all. We're here to deal with the biggest winners, biggest losers. Let me teach you how to vibe. What a draft. What a weekend that it was. I hope your team got better. Unless you're in the AFC South, I heard you got so significantly worse. Um, so let's let, let's let's unpack this round by round and and go through and see who are some of the Let late me teach you how to buy. who are some of the late jewels, who are some of the uh highs and lows. Let me Not teach a lot you of surprises in uh the early rounds. Not a lot of surprises in the early round, Liddy. No one pack smoker in all other land. Peter, Derek Smith with the 100 star bomb, dragon stickers in the chat. Caleb, Deacon Loafing. Let's go. Yeah, Caleb, we, we're definitely not doing that. But shout out to my mans, though, because that's exactly what I wanted. College football going to have multiple covers. Y'all seen the Bears, Falcons, Eagles. I think they're going to need it. Ready to see the Steelers in action. Everybody's ready to see their new team, Ezekiel Elliott, back to the Dallas Cowboys. Peter, no rain. Feds watching. James Williams, 6'4", safety. They're going to convert him to let him play star linebacker. That's interesting. I'm going to tell you why that's interesting. He said commanders are going to be better this season. Um, let me teach you how to vibe. All I know is my team got better. Smoothie. Is Smoothie a saint? Is Smoothie a, 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 a raven? But shout out to Smoothie, though. Let Smoothie, me teach you uh, how to vibe. Got not one, but two. Vibe Nation hoodies off of geekunleashed.com. Exclamation point merch code boo there. Check out Patrick Walker. What up? And if you do have any merch, like Smoothie, Give me a high quality picture and I'll get y'all in the commercial. All right. So let's break this down. Let's get into it. Um, y'all know me. Y'all know the vibes. Y'all know how, how I do things. You know what I'm saying? Unrivaled, unmatched, undefeated. Yeah. AFC South going to be tough. I, I know you've seen, um, uh, Michael Parsons and CJ Stroud arguing about it. CJ Stroud walk circles around him. Michael Parsons cannot, cap he said you may disagree but Devin actually made great that season you for Franklin and Bo Nicks already had chemistry no nah, I mean Calvin I was just like kind of trolling a little bit now listen let me clear that up for the record because you wasn't in here you wasn't in here on draft day too but look the reason why I didn't like it because I was like why would you sell the farm for Russ only to trade him to the Steelers and pay his salary to draft Bo Nix. If they just drafted Bo Nix and they hadn't gave up the farm to get him, like it actually wasn't a bad move. Vibe. They actually follow my thought process. If Sean Payton is the coach that he says he is, and he gets to draft a quarterback with a Let clean slate and vibe. bring in new players. But to me, I was just like, you gave up everything to get him. Now you're giving him away and paying. Like that would, I've never seen a team pay $250 million for a quarterback only to pay $40 million of it for him to play for a team that you're going to have to play. If you make the playoffs, it wasn't so much Bo Nix. It's just all they let did to do that. Like, why didn't they just like, if they still had drew lock and just let him walk and then drafted a quarterback, they could have saved themselves probably teach you five to six players and a quarter of a billion dollars. That's like, that's why it didn't make sense to me. It's the same thing that uh, Atlanta did. Uh, D four. What up? Shelly Barnes What's good family. How y'all feeling? Commented two times. I'm going to get a Vibe Nation picking the Cowboy hat. Let's do it. Q, Bob Hill, what's popping? Man, Kansas City. Yo, Vincent Rivers. How was the tournament of uh, VR? Like, I didn't get a chance to tap in the tournament uh, or day three of the draft. I had a lot going on Saturday. Um, But we tapping back in now. You see what I'm saying, Calvin? Like, they follow up my mode by not overpaying a QB, but it doesn't make sense that you're paying somebody $40 million to play in the same conference and you're drafting. Imagine if they never paid Russell Wilson and they just let drew lock walk. They would still have Justin Simmons. They have Jerry Judy. They'll be getting, let me um, teach you how to vibe. Po Nix and more. It's just like the same thing. The Falcons did Michael Penix was a great pick to me. I thought he's going to the best 
higher upside QBs in the draft because he can throw lasers. Like far as anybody that's in the draft, if you just want somebody that's going to turn it loose, Michael Penix is it. And he's playing in a dome. But they drafted exactly what I thought they was going to do or had the opportunity to do. I was like, they could probably get Penix or uh, Jaden Downey. Y'all heard me saying that. I just was confused that you gave Kirk Cousins 180 to then turn around and draft him. The best thing they could do right now is Kirk Cousins could be furious right now and they could trade him to somebody who didn't get the QB they wanted. That would be the best best case scenario for the Falcons and just get a backup QB and play uh, Michael Penix next year. That's that's just my thought of always never overpaying for a quarterback that has, that doesn't have a lot of playoff experience. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's that, that's that's my idea. That's my thing. You feel me? Be on behalf of the Steel City, yo, Chronic fan, got to be feeling good. Got Rome Adunza and Caleb Williams. I got to tap in. Been busy. We all been busy. Ron was popping. Get them stand along. <laughs> you see, everybody was happy with the Steelers picks. I mean, Hunter has paid in the picks. Yeah, we got to untap that because you got Drake May. Uh, how, are you, how are you feeling, Patriots fans? How y'all feeling about Drake May? Vikings fans, how are you feeling about J.J. McCarthy? Broncos fans, how are you feeling about... Like, how are the people that draft the QBs feeling about the QB they got? I know the Commanders about. fans are happy. Dun, dun, dun. What grade do I get a Titans draft? We about to unpack it all. And this is going up on YouTube. You too. Why the Vikings get a QB? Now, they did right. See, let's go back. I said when they gave Kirk Cousins all the money, I destroyed every Falcon fan that hopped in here because I was like, look, you still got to draft a QB. Whether they got Kirk Cousins or not, if Desmond Ritter and Taylor Hankey is gone, you still have to draft a QB. I thought, now, Let me teach you how this to is buy. the options. They could have got a, gave up a six-round pick. I don't know who they drafted. Falcons fans, you could tell me. They could have gave up Let a six-round pick and got Justin Fields for 4.7 and then draft Penix. I thought that's what they was going to do, but they didn't. Right, because that four point seven is better than forty five, but they gave Kirk Cousins the money. I said he's gonna be forty when his contract ends. It's no way you're gonna give this guy one hundred and eighty million dollars, knowing that he'll be forty coming off an ACL injury, less than ten months when the contract is over. He's not playing till he's forty at, at a high level. Kirk Cousins is not. So it was a two year deal essentially. The two years guaranteed. In the next two years, you're gonna get what you can get out of Kirk Cousins and move on. The hard part is now that you've drafted somebody that everybody feels like right now is better than Kirk Cousins. Like, bro, in 13 years, Kirk Cousins has one more playoff win than Penix. If Penix is the starter for Atlanta this year and they make the playoffs and win a game, he'll already have more playoff Let wins than, than Kirk buy. Cousins. See what I'm saying? Like, the best thing they could do is Kirk Cousins plays like half or a whole of a season or don't start the season and they just trade him like the Raiders did. The Raiders try, signed Carr to that big deal and sent him to uh, the New Orleans. That's the best thing that they could do. That's the best thing that they could do. At, at, at best, that's the, that's the best they could get. Impulse Pizza Man with a 2024. Ooh. Can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait till the season start too. He said Drake May is Mac Jones 2.0. <laughs> you got to put more around him though. You got to put more around him. Yo, Shelly Barnes with the thousand star bomb. The Detroit Lions had another good draft too. Shout out to my Detroit family. The Cowboys had the worst draft of all 32 teams. <laughs> we about to unpack it. Bears did we league would be much better if the team was competitive. A to B, Bennett could have got drafted this high coming out of Indiana, so he would have been nice. Drake, I like Drake assuming he sits behind Brissett. The annoying part of my favorite draft commitment would process the six. Mm. Muhammad Kamara, he's going to make a big impact. Shelly Barnes with another 200 dragon stickers in the chat. Bucks did a good job. Bucks always go defense. Bro, I ain't going to lie. I like the Joe Milton pick. I ain't going to lie. I like the Joe Milton pick. Because Joe Milton is like, by all accounts, like a more athletic Jacoby Brissett. You know what I'm saying? Like, he said, um, he said, cut. I don't know if Cousins even starts, Andre, to be honest. I mean, you, 36 coming off of an ACL in less than a year is like a medical miracle. Just think Aaron Rodgers had to, had the injury last year and missed the whole season. And then like, you see what I'm saying? Like that's a similar type of injury. We talking about an older guy having an injury. We're not talking about somebody 25 draft was for sure. Lit was for sure. Lit. Let me teach you how to vibe. Yeah, they thought Justin Fields was a superman. They couldn't under coaching. They didn't have the talent. The Williams 
is about to walk with. That's what I said about Mac Jones and Justin Fields. Like they never put enough around them to see what they could be. Now they bring in new guys and give them everything. It's going to be funny. Do, 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 do. Roman Wilson is nice. Yeah, I like a lot of edge rushes. Who has the best roster, including trades and draft? Scary rosters, the Chiefs. I'm saying like, but if they rush him out there, he going to do what Tannehill did, Andre. That's my fear. The Shamrick, what up? Stat man, like P. Smith, what up? My, my, my problem is if you take an old guy and you rush him back off an of injury, scared, looking over his shoulder at a young guy, Y'all seen how Tannehill was the first six weeks. Looked like a baby deer in practice. His leg wasn't healed. He couldn't step up in the pocket. When pressure came, he couldn't move. Like, you don't know how stiff uh, 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 ACL is going to be less than, like, he's literally going to be like 10 months off of surgery when season starts. How much of camp work does he get in? How comfortable does he feel? First time you drop back and you got somebody screaming off that edge coming running a, a, a linebacker running four or five speed coming off the edge 300 pound lineman can he step up and throw the football and if he don't you got to be looking at michael Penix like you know what i'm saying like the side eye look i mean we're feeling good about the draft we about to unpack it though eagles throw the best corners in the draft not necessarily stole this is an offensive first round so he just fa- they just fail deer in the head like everybody talking about their team kc got one where i say they win it again man the DBs went in second to third round. They did. They really did. Yo, I ain't gonna lie. When y'all got Adonai out Mitchell in post, I kind of got a little irritated. Like I, like you know, what I'm saying, like you, when, I'm, I'm always looking to see what the Jags, Texans, and Colts get. And when they got Adonai Mitchell in the second round, I said, "Oh, we Michael Pittman Jr. Adonai Mitchell." And then the Titans went right in and drafted Brownlee after that. And Brownlee was mad. He was like, he felt like that he should have been uh, one of the top corners coming off the board. Dude is aggressive. I like it. I'm excited for Kool-Aid too. Kool-Aid went to a good spot playing in New Orleans. Like he's not going to have to, like he can go out and just like really get get acclimated. All right. So let's go through the first round and everybody can kind of give their grades on how they feel about it. Caleb Williams, we all knew was going number one uh, to to the, the Chicago Bears. We knew Caleb Williams was going one. Bear fans, do you feel like you should have traded back and drafted one of the other guys? Do you think there's another quarterback in this draft that's going to see Jay Stroud, y'all? Or do you feel like you got the guy? I need to hear from the Bear fans. Bear fans, y'all let me know. Do do you feel like you got Bryce Young instead of CJ Stroud? Or or you feel like, nah, this is the guy. I feel like he's, he's going to do everything we want him to do. Oh yeah, Tavondre Sweat. Oh my goodness, and we are gonna get into that too because it's some it's some Titan fan base that kind of irritated me. But we 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 gonna deal with them in time. Amber, what's good? Nick, Akon, do 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 do. Will Edward B. Pizza man, what up? I was a little saw to be drafted. Polk over Agana. NFC South gonna be different. Yes, it is. The Raiders were hoping Penix for the fall, but I don't know. Look, if you the if you the Vikings or the Raiders. Why was you sitting back? I know why the Broncos was sitting back because they felt like they wanted Bo Nix. So I ain't really tripping on that. But I'm saying, see, the Broncos did what I say do, but they made a mistake in paying Russ to play Steelers this year because they got Zach Zach Wilson and uh, Bo Nix. You know what I'm saying? Like, that would be super, like, there would be like less than $5 million, but now you're paying 38 to the Steelers to use their, I'm, I'm confused. Bo is going to be hella surprised. Uh, stuck in the AFC West. See, that's the problem is you overshadow by playing with, uh, playing in a division with Mahomes. But that's why I say like, I like the, the sauce of the Raiders. The Raiders is like, we'll just run the ball, play defense and get two tight ends. Brock Bowers and, and Meyer going to be dirty for Oakland. Cause they're going to run the ball and slow it down. So it, it, it lets me believe that Oakland feels pretty good about having Gardner Minshew out there this year. There could be others this year, more talented than QBs. Absolutely not. Keller was the best choice. Worst choice would have been Bo Nix. Like Jane Dane's better. Drake May looks like a younger, more faster than Josh Allen. But Keller was the right fit for us, Bears. <laughs> Boy, y'all some trolls. Charles, what up? I don't think he's the next Drew Brees, but I think it's a step in the right direction. It's just that they paying Russell Wilson still. If they wasn't paying Russell Wilson still, I would have been happy, but you lose Jerry Judy and Justin Simmons in the process. So it's like, okay, you leave, lose one of the best free safeties in football and, and you lose um, one of your best receivers. 
you do get you do get get Troy Franklin later in the draft cheap. You do got Mims. You do you do got said. Now it just depends on is Sean Payton the coach he thinks he is. I don't think so. I think they're gonna be the worst team in in the West, and I think uh, the Chargers and the Raiders are gonna be better this year. <sighs> All right, so number two, Jaden Daniels. The Commanders had a good draft. They gotta feel good. You you. You got to feel like Jaden Daniels, you got to be thinking CJ Stroud. Like he's the guy that was behind the guy that everybody knew was going to go first that a lot of people, including myself, think is the best QB in the draft. If I just go back and look at LSU and say like this dude in his last year, every game I could count on Jaden Daniels to throw for three, 400 yards. Like he was really he, like, if you, if you need a guy that can move around in the pocket and turn the ball Let loose, like he's, like, he's not shy of, of, of throwing the ball and putting, putting it, putting it up. And that's kind of what, what, uh, what, what the commanders, uh, should be looking towards. Um, just think RG three without the injury. Uh, that, that's my thought. Didn't lock the Dolphins first round, but I don't watch much. Keith Thomas is the, the impending Penn state, uh, uh, stat guy in the chat. You know what I'm saying? Like that dude knows everything about Penn State. So, so Michael, if you want to know anything about Penn State players, ask Keith because every time I see Penn State, my, my head, I just roll my eyes. Nevin, what up? I see, uh, dun, 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 dun. All right. Drake May to the Patriots. Now this is, this was the first one where we kind of like, everybody kind of knew one and two where they was going. Three was Drake May. Was the Patriots going to take JJ McCarthy or were they going to take Drake may obviously they, they, they did a good job of playing possum Patriots fans. You got to be cool with the front office saying like, we're playing possum. I got, I really feel like the past fans was playing possum, bro. Like, like they knew they was going to take Drake may the way that they put the pick in was no JJ McCarthy is not the guy we tricked everybody into thinking we wanted, wanted uh JJ McCarthy, but really in reality, like they always was, a, was on Drake may. And that makes sense that they went and got Jacoby Brissett because it, let me teach you how to vibe. hear me out. If you go get Jacoby Brissett, you're saying here's our day one starter. Let me get Drake may, but let me have a competition to see if he outplays him. And in the back of their mind, knowing that Brissett not going to be there long because he's a backup, like one year bridge, two year bridge at the max. Then you go get Joe Milton, a guy you can develop who was the biggest arm in the draft who's like a developmental style player. So it's like you get your guy and then you get your other guy. And then when Brissett comes off the books for that seven, eight million, whatever he's getting, you got two QBs. You got two B two, two, your quarterback room is cheap. Put it that way. Like you, you got guys to put on there to put in your, uh, in your organization for cheap. And that's what you want to do. He said, JJ McCarthy would have blown your mind. It's a lot of people that was high on it. He said, Jordan Travis was a favorite before injury. Kind of undersized. Yeah, 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 yeah. So number four, I said it. I knew I, I said that the Cardinals are going to take Marvin Harrison Jr. I felt like he was, a, he was a player that was going to go. It was people hoping and praying that he would drop. I said, he's not going to drop. The Cardinals are not going to let him pass. They let D hop and uh, Hollywood go regardless of what they do with Kyler Murray. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. Was, was going to be the pick to the Cardinals, even though like people didn't want him to go there. I just, I just felt like he was going to go. Now, for his sake, you just hope that Kyler Murray and the Cardinals organization figure out what they want to do to not ruin a young talent like that. All right, then the Chargers, I told everybody we wanted Joe Alt in Nashville, but in my mind, I felt like the Chargers were going to take him. Only say, only way I said the Chargers won't take him is if they was trading Justin Herbert in some blockbuster, like shake up the draft type of trade. If, if now hear me out, if Jim Harbaugh wanted JJ McCarthy, but it lets you know that what he was saying was true. Cause sometimes people lie. They kept saying that Harbaugh was in love with Justin Herbert. And apparently he is cause he went and got Joe Alt to play left tackle for them. Uh, and when you see that, that let, let, let you know what, uh, what, what Jim Harbaugh, kind of meant what he's saying. Sometimes you don't know if people's bluffing and, and then people say, why trade him? I'm like, Justin Herbert's almost getting 60. Um, if, if you want McCarthy and you want to trade Herbert, somebody would have gave up their whole draft. Like the, like the Rams did for uh, Matthew Stafford for Herbert. 
you probably would have got multiple picks in the top and the impending years. You know what I'm saying? They 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 could have potentially took another tackle and got JJ McCarthy and could probably got another pick in this draft and maybe even potentially another player too. But the Chargers get Joe Alt. They got bookend tackles now. Um, Justin Herbert. Maybe they'll save his ribs from getting broken again. Um, yeah, Ron, I'm not crazy about where Marvin Harrison Jr. Li- uh, landed. He said disagree. Titans should have traded both picks for Derek Carr and signed Kirk Cousins. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> hey, where where uh, Cooper hit hit uh hit Nick with some tomatoes, bro? Hit hit Nick with some tomatoes. Guru start popping on what's popping, my boy. Nevin, last. All right, so look, Malik neighbors to the Giants. The Giants have been selling all all weekend that they were going to take J.J. McCarthy. J.J. McCarthy wanted to go to New York, and lo and behold, the Giants say, we're all in on Danny Dimes. You can't move him. You can't do anything with him. Shot by Buddha is undefeated, and once again, correct. This is what happened when you overpay a mid-quarterback. You're stuck having to try to put so much talent around him. Do you even know if it's him that's better or just you put so much talent around him, he can't fail? Um, Malik Neighbors, Jalen Hyatt last year, uh, they got some stud young receivers. Now, if Danny Dimes go out and does his average of 15 passing touchdowns again, you're going to be sick knowing that you're still on the books for Danny Dimes and his $40 million a year contract. Uh, But Malik Neighbors, a a player that I felt if Joe Alt was off the board – that if he failed Marvin Harrison Jr. or Malik Neighbors, the Titans may take a chance. But going back and looking at the uh, the Twitter, the Titans were not lying. They spent a lot of time with J.C. Latham in the draft process, and Bill Callahan told his son, that's who I want. Go get me J.C. Latham. Uh, Bill Belichick, Nick Saban all said he could easily play left tackle. They worked him at left tackle. They worked him pretty hard. Uh, up into the draft, and the Titans do not trade back. They take J.C. Latham at seven to play left tackle for the Titans next season. Uh, Nicholas Petit Frere from Ohio State that we drafted in the second round uh, a few years ago is, is going to come back off of his gambling suspension slash injury to uh, play right tackle next season with moving uh, Sadiq Charles and um, and uh, Dylan Raidens to fight it out at right guard. Oh, my he said Chargers, Ravens next Super Bowl. Impossible. They're both on this AFC. You trolling, bro. Yeah, Ravens always go defense. I see. Um... <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like Latham. Uh, Michael Penix Jr. was the first shocking pick of the draft. I think everybody was pretty much understanding of who their team was going to get. Falcon fans got to be happy. I know this sounds Loving. crazy, but Loving Falcon light. fans, you got to be happy. Yo, that what's wasn't popping? the first. That wasn't the first shocking pick. <laughs> what was the first shocking pick to you? The first shocking pick is the dumbass Colts taking the player that got me. Hey, y'all ain't even picking right flagged. now. Man, hey, listen, I'm about to mute you because the, the, Colts, the Colts didn't pick the number 15, man. So, look, you just you just mute yourself till we get down to 15, man. <laughs> You just mute yourself to get down the I, I, was, I, 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 I won't say nothing else until I – will you take a player with a broken neck Listen, in any man, way, shape, or form? We'll talk about the Colts when we get down there to deal with the dumpster and the Colts. We we, oh worry, we worry about the Colts in a minute. When we get down to the oh mid – we get to the mid, mid – mid. Can't say Nashville round. without two L's. Just want to – When we get to the mid of the first round, the, the actual middle – Mid for short. We'll talk about the Colts when we get down to 15, right in the mid of the pack. I am surprised that the Cardinals took uh, Harrison Jr. I wasn't. I said he was going to go there. I don't think Kyler – I don't think they they believe in Kyler Murray that much. He's about to go into the same situation. Even even if you don't believe in him, you still got to No, I I, I don't think they believe in him. Huh? Like, I don't think they believe in him. I said the two quarterbacks that could have got traded in the draft was was uh, Kyler Murray and Justin Herbert, but I mean you you can't move them. Mm. You you can't move you can't move them. Would you rather put your eggs in a rookie or somebody who didn't didn't have snaps in the league at least? What do you mean? Does experience matter a little bit? Like you ain't about what to players make this. Are we talking about? Anybody like? No, we need, we need put... specific players because they in a specific situation. Who Cause they, the Cardinals? Because they did this last year. They they traded back and they drafted left tackle. That everybody they wanted. They got Paris Johnson last year, and then this year I, I don't think they really had a good trade partner. And they just said, "Look, 
we got to take a, a, a generational talent at wide receiver because it, it, if he ain't playing Call of Duty and he is protected, Kyle Murray can put up three, four hundred. But uh, that, that ain't the, that ain't the debate for right now. We got to get through this first round. We not finna spend all this time talking about these mid teams like the Cardinals and the Colts. Wow, teams that start with a C, as in C grade. Wow. All right, so look, we got Rome or do like Bears got to be happy. They knew the they Bears had Caleb Williams in the pocket, but if you the Bears, in your mind, you just close your eyes and you say, please, Harrison, neighbors, or do one of y'all got to fall. And nobody traded up, and they fail, and you, you get your receiver, who people think that Odunza could be the best route runner out of the crew, like pure route runner. Yeah, I mean, he runs some dirty routes. I ain't going to lie, like watching him Keenan play. Allen 2.0, and he I mean, gets to learn he, from he, Keenan he Allen. He gets to work with a vet, though. He, he get to work with Keenan Allen every day. He going to learn every trick in the book. Uh, as far as his style, 6'2", can get in and out of breaks, can dunk, can route run, um, can catch the football in traffic. Um, then at uh, 10, you got Vikings. You got – hold on one second. All right, so – you have Vikings get J.J. McCarthy, right? Now, the most desperate team in the draft to me was the Vikings. Yo, KD shows up right foot, right, right at perfect time. The only one of the only Viking fans on earth. All right, so the Vikings is the most desperate team. Nobody wants to trade with them. They got two picks in the first round, and Kirk Cousins is gone. You got arguably the best receiver in the league frustrated. Don't know who his QB going to be. He don't want it to be Sam. He don't want it to be Dalton. And they've just let half of their team walk for Kirk. And then Kirk is gone, right? You don't think Josh Dobbs is going to be the guy, you know, he's out and you got to rebuild, but I ain't going to lie. They follow my mode. They got lucky. You take JJ McCarthy, a winner, a kid with a, 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 you won't have to question his mindset. You put Aaron Jones in the backfield who just ran, ran, ran wild on the Cowboys in the playoffs. You got, you got, um, uh, you got Jay Jettis. You got, you got Gritty. You got uh, Addison that you just drafted last year. Another dog. He say, look, we got our nucleus. There it is. You got two receivers. You got a quarterback. That's a winner and a run, a run game for him to sit behind as a rookie to, to know that he's not going to have to shoulder the load. You got a running back that can get a thousand receiving and a thousand rushing. You got that guy. Even though they wind up falling into it, you know, Vi- Vikings some kind of way back then to just, to, to just not being completely left out at QB this draft. He says a, a system QB. What's wrong with being a system QB? You say that like, that's a bad thing. It's a lot of QBs that should play like a system QB. You making my point. <laughs> he's got a running back. That's that's a dog. You got two dogs at receiver, and he's not gonna be asked to do much year one. That's I mean, do you want to pay Kirk Cousins one hundred and eighty million dollars, or do you want to have thirteen million dollars tied up in a JC, JJ McCarthy and Dalton? Y'all figure it out, man. Shout by Buddha method works. All right, ele- eleven. The Jets take Fashanu, another tackle. Um, Want to protect Aaron Rodgers? Not much to say about that. Twelve was was really the one that the Broncos sat and was patient and got their guy, Sean Payton. Wanted Bo Nix. They went and got Zach Wilson as a backup plan. Everything makes sense about what they did, except they're paying Russell Wilson thirty eight million dollars to play for the Steelers this year. That there would be a great move to start rebuilding in the West. If you're not paying Russell Wilson, 38 million and lost Jerry Judy and Justin Simmons in the, in the process, he said, should have gave job. I mean, what, what shot do you give Dobbs? Dobbs got the same shot. He got in Tennessee last year. Okay. You put a guy that's been in the league for six years, gets his first win as, as a, <laughs> as a player that's been in the league for seven years, gets his first win. He's not enough. If Josh Dobbs is your starting quarterback, uh, Jay Jettis asked for a trade. 
you got to make some moves. Josh Dobbs is not the future. And let's be honest, if Kirk Cousins' seasons is over, you got to draft somebody and restart. You have to. It, it only makes sense. He said the Vikings and Jess swap pick. Oh, because there's a QB involved. And the Jets is not drafting a QB. Real simple. The the, the tackle that they want is going to be there regardless. Uh, Brock Bowers at 13. The Raiders. I, I really feel like the Raiders were thinking if Michael Penix failed, the Raiders was, I, I, in my mind, I feel like the Raiders was was is is if Michael Penix drops, we get him. If not, Brock Bowers was the second option. I felt like they gave Minshew a little more than a bridge quarterback gets, so I felt like they were comfortable with him and Aiden O'Connell. In Myers last year, Brock Bowers this year, dogs at tight end, they're gonna run the football and, and play the slow game with with Devonte and uh, Jacoby. Uh, I, I I think that's gonna be their game plan. They they spent a hundred million dollars on uh on Wilkinson to put down there with uh Max Crosby. I mean I I like the way the Raiders are approaching it. They're not approaching it trying to chase the Chiefs. They're saying we're gonna play a different brand of football. They said why would I want Zach as a backup though? Because he's cheap. Why would you pay Mitch Trubisky fourteen million dollars to be a backup and you wouldn't you wouldn't pay less than five million for Mason Rudolph or Zach Wilson? If you're gonna get a bridge, get a cheap bridge. You get Flacco for eight million. You get Jameis Wilson for seven. Why on earth would you want an expensive bridge? Mm-mm-mm. Next, Saints go tackle again. Ryan Ramzik being out, it only made sense. Now we're getting down to number fifteen, so Impulse can roll up his his blunt and smoke on the pack of his team. That maybe, just maybe. He's thinking if we're going to go D D D in Dallas Turner is there. They drafted Latou. Man had five teams give him a medical red flag and say, nah, we good. Now I ain't going to say that's a make or break. You feel me? Teams pass on dogs every day. Half of these dudes that drafted might not even make the squad. That goes to show for, for free agency too. You feel me? But I don't know, man. Bargain Ben Ballard strikes again. He did some other stuff late deeper in the draft, but that first round pick, man, I th- we could have got a receiver, which we did. I'm talking about we could have got a, another lineman. We could have got a DP. Right, like, play, it's play so DM much talent that seconds. was left. If Looking at the board, the, the second half of the first round, you took Latou. Give me, give and me, if one, you, give me, give me one to two players behind him that you would attack. I, I see two of them, but I mean, if you're picking that position, who you pick? Uh, Xavier Worthy went to the Chiefs, so everybody should be fired, or someone should have a stern chat with this morning. How do we let this happen? We let Patrick Mahomes get the fastest receiver in the draft. We, 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 we not only we, we talking about the Colts. I know. I'm just Y'all saying. No, a lot of people. Team. I see Dallas Turner and Jerry verse. In, in my uh, mind, when I was thinking edges, I thought Atlanta or, or uh, I, I I thought Atlanta for sure. I was like, somebody gonna take an edge, and it's gonna be Dallas or Jared Verse. Like watching watching all the teams play this year, the two people that like, I was like, yo, I would if I was a quarterback, I wouldn't want to see Dallas turn a verse. Like they're just too rangy. Like this that Micah Parsons, like they're too fast and too strong. They move like a linebacker, but they play on the line. They play good in the run. They get out to the QB. They can stunt. They can do everything. If 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 I if he didn't like who was there, I just would have traded back too because it's like mm. stacking picks. I don't know. It was like that. That was a questionable pick. Well, hopefully he he becomes something. But to me, it's like we j- we drafted Jared Hughes all over again. Man, they make not one play for the Colts. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So mo- moving on from the mid Colts, and I, obviously I, I, you were upset at the pick because we're saying that with the pick y'all made at fifteen, that Dallas Turner and Verse are not going to be better than Latou. We we're looking at Byron Murphy. You you. I mean, it's a Chop Robinson. It's a lot of defenders that they got picked out to him that you got to be sitting there saying like, you got to hope that uh that Latou just turns into like. Like like some um, neck, neck I got a working talent. theory. 
I hate them. I have my working theory is any Alabama DB that's still on the board, just take them. Oh. At best, at best, they become, you know, an overachiever for your squad. At worst, you know, you got depth, unless you're D-milling her. Man, don't unless do D-milling like that, man. Don't do D-milling <laughs> like that, man. Unless you're D-milling her. All right, so look, but we, everybody else is a dog. The Seahawks got Byron Murphy, who people would say uh, between between Let Byron Murphy and, uh, and uh, Tavondre Sweat, interior guys that can just wreak havoc up front. Uh, Byron Murphy going to the Seahawks. The Seahawks have a have a game plan. They're going to take the best defender on the board every year until the end of the world, and I'm not mad at it <laughs> because like that they, their process has never not worked for the Seahawks. Just taking the biggest, nastiest defender they could possibly get every first round. Them and the Redskins, I mean the Commanders, Commanders now, but those two teams are like, look, who's the best D line on the board that we can't lose with every year, and, and it works out. EP, what up? All right, cool. What, what's popping? All right, then we got the Vikings trading back in to get Dallas Turner. They said somebody's slipping. I'm pretty sure the Vikings thought that uh, the Falcons would have picked him up. And then when y'all passed on him, it's it, it's the key to me that when y'all passed on Dallas Turner, the Vikings mm-hmm. traded up 23 to 17 to get Dallas Turner. So it turns out, man, I, the so far, the Bears got the two guys they wanted, and the Vikings got lucky. If you're the Vikings, you had to think that the, the Giants maybe had pulled the trigger on McCarthy, and you had to be thinking the Falcons was getting Dallas Turner. No way you thought a guy that was going to go at uh, 6 and 8 are still on the board at 10 and 17. Vikings picking the best player available for their team. You, you lo- Losing, um, Let me teach you um, how to whatchamacallit, the, uh, the Neil Hunter. Like, you got to be saying, like, I, that's as good as they could have possibly asked for. It's, that's as good as they could have possibly asked for. All right, so then you get uh, the Bengals take Mims. Bengals fans, how y'all feeling about Mims? I kind of didn't know what the Bengals was going to do. I was expecting all draft to see T. Higgins get dealt. Um, so Bengals fans, how we, how we feeling about the Mims? Let me bit? teach you how to vibe. I was just, you know, it was I the only one? Like waiting on the Bengals to trade T. Higgins? Like the whole time I was like, like what's about to happen? Bengals fans, how we feeling about Mims? Um, Georgia offensive tackle, huge. I think the dude is like six eight or six nine. They say talk about the Raiders. I like the Raiders pick, honestly. Eugene, you making my point. The Neil Hunter gone, he's going to the Texans, I think. Yeah, I was, Cam, I was looking for Higgins and Ayuk to be dealt. I was, I honestly was looking at that. Like, we're going to get to that in a second. We're going to get to that in a second. I don't want to talk about the Texans. They in the AFC South. He said Bengals wanted Murphy from high school, DeSoto. EP, they're going to run a two tight end set. The Raiders know you can't outpass the Chiefs. Every team get in the West and try to outpass the Chiefs. You say, you know what? They're going to put Myers and Brock Bowers, two tight end set, Devontae Adams and, and, and Jacoby, and say, you know what? <laughs> We're going to run the ball and do two twin tight buy. ends. I mean, it, you can't beat the Chiefs trying to outpass them. Maybe they're saying they're going to slow it down. I'm not mad at having two nasty tight ends. I think that's the like that's that's the Buddha style of ball. Like, give me two, two two nasty tight ends and I'm just beat you up up front. You ain't getting the ball back. Rams, Aaron Donald out, Jared Verse in. Jared Verse one of the nastiest edges that to me him and Dallas Turner were. If I'm taking the edge in this draft and him in the first round, those were the two guys. Probably like Latou and Chop Robinson behind that, but the 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 Ram the Rams getting Jared Verse was kind of crazy. Uh. He just kind of fell to the right team. I think he's going to fit in perfect with what the Rams want to do. Remember uh, Floyd a few years ago and Vaughn Miller coming hard off the edge. I think that Jared Verse could be nasty like a Vaughn Miller. Like he's a he, he's like that that athletic, like 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 a poor man's Julius Peppers. All 
I, Troy, well, I, I, I'm probably going to mess his name up. Steelers take Watanu. Steelers have a, have a, have a trend in these last, uh, couple of drafts, um, going trench warfare, a team that's having, uh, let me teach you how to vibe. A really good off season is the Steelers. Um, offensive lineman from Washington. What do y'all think Steelers? I know that, uh, a lot of, like they probably was hoping to let that these offensive linemen fail, but even still, like Steelers always getting big nasty linemen. I think they got Dewan last year, huge lineman. Dolphins go Chop Robinson. Dolphins fans, I seen Michael B earlier saying he wasn't crazy about Chop Robinson. Um Christian Wilkinson gone to the Raiders. Chop Robinson in Dolphins uh Go, going edge right here, which I think Dolphins fans. That's what I'm saying. Peace of man. If you put Myers and uh, Brock Bowers out there who you can flex Bowers and then put Tay Adams, imagine a stack with Myers, Brock Bowers and Tay Adams is on one side of the field. Kind of getting a little spicy out there. He said, honestly, it was fa- with shock he fell. I wasn't really shocked. I felt like defenders and offensive linemen was gonna kinda fall a little bit. I feel like this is gonna be a quarterback receiver type of draft. Um the Eagles getting the number one corner off the board, really needing help in their secondary. They get C D Deuce back and then Quinion Mitchell, um, who between him and Terry on honor was the one two corners. Um, Eagles gotta really feel good about getting the first corner off the board. Uh, knowing they need help in the secondary, but CD Deuce back, Quinn Mitchell, that uh, you can't go wrong if you're the Eagles. You probably couldn't be happier. Then you get the Jaguars, lost Calvin Ridley, um, go Brian Thomas Jr. out of LSU at 23, which could be a silent dog in the, uh, for them because I don't feel like Christian Kirk is a one. He's a slot. So Brian Thomas, it really got a chance to, to to shine and get a lot of a lot of looks this year uh with Calvin really being gone who's a dolphin fan Michael B I hope Chop Robinson is good I don't watch Penn State football Keith Thomas is the only person in here that cares about Penn State could have got him later I feel like this draft team's got yeah a lot of teams got what they wanted in the first round uh in my opinion um Lions get Terry on Arnold defensive back Alabama back to back years last year was branch this year's uh Terry on Arnold um the Eagles and the Lions got to be feeling good they were able to get a position to need late in the first round and getting like w- like 1A 1B off the board uh at 22 and 24 they had to be feeling uh they had to be f- be feeling good about that um it's yet to be seen who who knows? I mean, like both of them could be dogs. I, I I don't see to be to be honest, I don't I don't see uh I don't see where you'd be wrong between either one of the two that they pick. I'm excited for the safety. Like Kyle Hamilton. He said, oh, <laughs> He said, I know Brian Thomas is a LSU receivers have this, uh, this thing. All right. So green Bay Packers, uh, go trench warfare again, uh, with Jordan love. Uh, one thing they, that with Bakhtiari being gone and them having a little depth issue last year, O line, it kind of makes sense for the Packers to go in and, uh, and, and, and drive tackle. He said Chop Robinson is close to Parsons on play style. I don't think he is as athletic as Micah Parsons, though. I think he's he's got a little mean streak in him, a little a little rough, a little aggression. All right. And then uh you get down to the Buccaneers. Buccaneers are always going trench warfare. I don't think I've ever seen a draft for the Buccaneers uh didn't didn't go to the trenches.
it, it lets you know he might be he might be hurt uh ep all right buccaneers go center playoff team not often you see centers go in first round but uh you know get, getting 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 a, a signal caller for a team that's rebuilding uh life after brady uh making a great transition Let me teach you having how to uh, baker mayfield play like he did last year uh when you're down in that spot you're just looking to get somebody that's gonna be plug and play and i think they got one right there oh yeah they seen him get odunes they said nah we're going db all right uh cardinals draft again in the first round uh they, they picked marvin harrison jr and one thing about the cardinals if you looked at their draft they pick players all over the board Went edge rusher uh, out of Missouri. I <sighs> we yet to be seen. He might be a diamond in the rough. I don't know anybody uh, that's a Missouri fan uh, that that'll come in and uh, you know vouch for the pick they made. Uh, right, uh, right there, I I don't know Let me teach you how if to that's the pick though. I don't know if that's the pick. G's up. What up, Jimmy Dukes? Tone, Daniel, she have two times Connor, Fonza, Coop, EP, Eugene. Appreciate everybody tapping in. Real ones know what's good. My boy. Now this is this was the 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 next big shocker in the draft. Uh I made a reel. It it went slightly. It, it got it did did a little numbers on all platforms, bro. Listen. If you're a Buffalo Bill fan, I need you, you to come to the front of the line right now and explain why. If the Chiefs beat y'all every year in the postseason, if the Chiefs is your daddy, if you leaving in the shadow of the Chiefs, the Chiefs just won a second Super Bowl. Kadarius Tony melted down. They brought back McCole Hardiman. He got the game winning touchdown after they cut him loose to go to the Jets because they got Kadarius Tony and Sky Moore. And then nah, he they, got paid. He then got, they paid. got rid of Kadarius Tony and brought McCall Hardeman back. He gets the game winning touchdown in the Super Bowl. And the Buffalo Bills say, you know what? We so broke and we so beat down. And Diggs is gone and Poyer is gone. And Gabriel Davis is gone. You know what, Chiefs? If we haven't done y'all enough, like going deep when they could have threw it to Diggs to get a field goal to go to overtime. If 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 they haven't done enough. To, to harm the league let's just let the chiefs get the fastest player to ever run a 40 in the nfl uh, as if andy reed and patrick mahomes needs any more help like I'm, i i just need like mentality right let's just go mentality if there's a team that's like my nemesis and i hate this team and this team is always in my way i'm gonna do whatever i can to make it hard for them even if it hurts me like I'll sink the ship. I'm talking about like Charlton Heston, press the red button. I'm talking about um, Will Smith at the end. Of I am legend, just taking a grenade and just running up to the glass instead of like, they don't need the, the antidote. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm saying sink the ship, drop the nuke. There's no way I let the chiefs get Xavier worthy. And exactly what they did was trade the chiefs and i seen doo -doo -doo -doo. y'all know the sound y'all been watching the nfl draft all them years doo -doo 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 -doo. and it's a trade trade just in let me the buffalo bills just nuke the entire league and let the kansas city chiefs get the fastest receiver to ever run a 40 in the nfl draft and then you get these like buffalo bill pacifist that comes in and say well well remember john ross was fast we talking about the Bengals. Like, remember, such as just because he's fast doesn't. I, he did just play in the final four. Just because he's fast, yes. Remember, Kadarius did. Yeah, Kadarius Tony was also open every play. He just couldn't catch because he's too busy um, on the internet self sabotaging himself because he didn't want a championship. Um, at the end of the day, you're gonna. This is Tyreek Hill 2.0, and he might not be as athletic like going up and getting the ball and like contorting his body, but it doesn't matter. Andy Reid is going to get him the football and this dude is probably going to pick up a first down every time he touches it. And it's all the Buffalo Bills fault. And I'm going to blame the Bills and every Bills fan that comes in here, Bills Mafia, you might as well just change your colors to the Chiefs because not only did y'all like go, go for it 
in the playoffs instead of throwing it to Diggs. You lost Diggs because you didn't trust him with the ball at the end of the game. You lost. you losing all your players. Tredavious, White, Poyer, all of them's gone. Gabriel Davis, you send the tech as if the Texans, but bro, the Texans got CJ Stroud and they went from a three win team to winning in the playoffs at home in, in Houston. And you send CJ Stroud digs and then you turn and say, no, we're not done yet. The chiefs need Xavier worthy. All right, now I'm done. I, I was a little tight about that, but I'm saying Let's take the two young gifted quarterbacks in the league, Mahomes and CJ Stroud, and make sure they have another weapon. The Bills. No one circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills. He said he fast, but he don't have to be the cheetah. He don't. The Chiefs have a defense now. When the cheetah was there, the Chiefs didn't have a defense. Now they got an offense line, a defense, a run game, and Travis Kelsey, um, they, they just got Hollywood Brown. So imagine Hollywood Brown and Xavier Worthy both running like crisscross drag routes and over routes with, with Travis Kelsey bust, zone busting. Then Rasheed Rice get through dealing with his legal issues. He'll be back. Good God, man. Do y'all want to win? Or it's just like hand the best players, the best teams, all the Bills fault. Bills fans, where y'all y'all usually so like overstate, overspoken, and always butting in, being obnoxious. Come on, Buffalo Bills fans, tell us what was your thought process. And not only did you do it, you did it in a division where you'll have to face them in the playoffs. Bills make the playoffs. I hope they play the Texans in the first round and the Chiefs behind if they win. Let me teach you <laughs> like, how to vibe. I hope Diggs go for 150 and I hope Worthy go for 200 if y'all have to play them. Like, seriously. Like, wh why on earth would you do this and make it hard? All right. I, I spent a lot of time on that pick, but I, I just was confused when I seen it. I, I just was frustrated that they don't want to win. All right. Dallas Cowboys finally get the pick. Dun, 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 and the 29th pick in the NFL draft, the Dallas Cowboys select Ezekiel Elliott. Everybody go to the thrift store, go to the, the, the nearest stray dog you see, go to your shelter, get your Ezekiel Elliott jersey back. And guess what? All the dumbass Cowboy fans get on my timeline and say, he, such and such has that number now. His jersey's going to be a different number. Like, like if, as if you be that fucking stupid that if, if Ezekiel Elliott jersey, if you still had a jersey with him in number 21, that you'd be dumb enough to Let say, I can't wear it because it's number 21. So if he gets number 23, I got to go get the 23 Ezekiel Elliott Dallas Cowboys jersey. Let how dumb can y'all be? Like, seriously, how stupid can a Cowboy fan base be if you still got an Ezekiel Elliott jersey, you can't wear it because it's 21 and somebody else got that number? It ain't Dion. You think somebody cares what number Ezekiel Elliott is? If it's an Elliott jersey, it's just that. But that's let me know the mindset of Cowboy fans. Like, they can't see the forest for the trees. Can't see the forest for the trees, bro. Like, literally the Cowboy fan base is, but, but the old Zeke jersey is 21. He might get a new number. So, I, I what? Cowboy fans, y'all always got so much to say. Let's hear about Ezekiel Elliott coming back and and uh Mike McCarthy that that that's so arrogant to to tell Adam Schefter that y'all don't need to make moves because y'all got the draft coming up and all y'all guys from last year is uh is uh is good enough for y'all to win a Super Bowl without making moves in free agency. Come on, let's hear it. Let's let's hear this genius playing, Cowboy fans. Yeah, hey, Eugene, uh, Eugene, Ezekiel Elliott, first play of the season, get lined up at, uh, at, at center and snap it and run a trick play. All right, you know Tyron Smith was out. They had no choice but to hope that they could get an a, a offensive tackle. You get uh, Tyler Guyton out of, out of Oklahoma. Dallas Cowboy fans, how do you feel about 
Ezekiel Elliott coming back and Tyler Guyton playing tackle for y'all. Yeah, Zeke came back today. Come on, Cowboy fans, Bills fans, the two of the top five most obnoxious fan bases. Let's hear it. Y'all always be having so much to say. Draft day, Let draft Monday you over, y'all quiet. Come on, man. This is our year. Guess what? Mike McCarthy, Zeke Elliott, Dak Prescott, box them all up. They gone. Halfway through the season, they all out. Then Cancun. Hey, look, Trey Lance playing by week eight. What what week is got Dallas uh, by next next year? Trey Lance playing, uh, giving the ball to Deuce Vaughn. Yeah, halfway through the season. Bro, come on, EP. Cowboy fans, Buffalo Bill fans, where are y'all at? Come on, man. Y'all be ducking, man. Y'all be saying I'm ducking. Y'all ducking. All offseason, y'all talking about how, how much y'all about to reload and the draft come. Y'all just lost Tyron Smith. Y'all got Tyler Guyton. And Zeke back. <laughs> Yo, the Eagles, the Eagles just got uh Saquon Barkley. Y'all brought Zeke back. <laughs> hey, look, and Cowboy fans, I need to hear from y'all because y'all was dogging Zeke after he uh after he left saying, Oh, we got Pollard, man. We gonna draft somebody. We don't want him back. And then y'all let the Vikings get Aaron Jones after he pulled his pants down and defecated on y'all end zone in the playoffs. Why didn't you go get Aaron Jones? Why didn't you get Aaron Jones, bro? I, I'll get it. Like you let him go to the Vikings. Then you let Saquon go to the, uh, to the Eagles that y'all sent over here, uh, brought Zeke back <laughs> pending physical. All right, let's get into it, man. Nate Wiggins to the Ravens. Ravens always pick at the end of the first round and they always get somebody. And I'm like, I bet they good. It always like somebody that's oversized, no diddy. And this Nate Wiggins dude is probably going to push Marlon Humphrey out of the hemisphere. Cause Marlon Humphrey been, uh, been banged up the last few years. So watch him be like uh Kyle Hamilton and wind up being a dog for the Ravens. Cause everybody always like want the Ravens to pick offense and they always go defense and it always works out. Josh Jacobs was too expensive and Derrick Henry didn't want to go to Dallas. He wanted to go to Baltimore. I'm cool with Zeke coming back. I'm glad to see God. And it looks so yo, everybody do me a favor right now. Clap it up. So New Jersey, the first cowboy fan to, to make a statement after, uh, after this blunder of an off season for them. Yeah. I, I Mike, I'm like, uh, offensive tackle I knew when Tyron Smith left like they really had a choice they got to try to hope that they can get a first round graded tackle uh, but I don't know man Cowboys like got a lot of holes bro cap it up shout out to so go follow him too so New Jersey Silver Blue Huddle Rich Black Man when only uh, Rich Black Man has to work Am amazing the, one of the people that never worked Rich black man got to work. He busy today. Y'all I'm going to just say, I'm going to blame it on Monday or something like the coffee wouldn't biting, uh, the bagels and the, and the donuts this morning wouldn't hitting. Uh, Let me so teach you how to I, I, shout, shout out to South New Jersey for showing up. You know what I'm saying? Um, to, to take these, these lumps in this off season. Shout out, shout out to South New Jersey. The cam, cam is here. He mad cam. So cam got his fist balled up so bad. He probably broke dislocated one of his fingers. He's so damn mad. Cam was first. He got the black forces and the scully on right now. All right, look. So then another surprise. Uh, I, I almost got kicked out of Tata stream. Ricky Pearsall. <laughs> Everybody on ESP was like, who? <laughs> Look, 49ers are great in the draft, but I was confused. I was confused. 
I was confused. I'm like, let me teach you how to buy. Arc Armstead left. They finna take a nasty D tackle. In my mind, in my mind, I'm like the the 49ers about to take Tavondre Sweat or uh, Newton. I said they finna get another dog. They already got uh, Bosa and Armstead. Like they finna get a goon. I'm like, what defensive lineman or edge rusher out there that we don't we can't we don't know who they is because Telenoa Hufunga come back, Brown come back. I'm like, they got young corners. They get like what they haven't. In my mind was I thought Ayuk and uh, T Higgins was gonna get traded, but neither one of them had made a move. So I was like, well, maybe. But then they drafted Ricky Pierce. So I said, is they about to trade Ayuk? Like what was going on? Like they got Debo a twenty five million dollar contract. Uh, George Kittle, you got um, Jenny. Like, uh, what, what, what they about to do? <sighs> and Brandon Ayer, what up? He gonna fix his attitude on the Ravens, though, Ron. I don't think the Ravens ever read about worry about attitude. You can't like you play for the Ravens. Like they're going to get you straight over there. Uh, I ain't going to lie. I love the Marvin Harrison Jr. I was confused about Darius Robinson though, but he might turn out to be a dog that nobody like an undersung dog. And then the last pick in the first round, you would have thought the Panthers won the Super Bowl because like, bro, I, is it just me or anybody else felt this way? Like it was kind of odd watching the 49ers pick before the Panthers. Like the Panthers did send them Christian McCaffrey that got them to the Super Bowl. Like the Panthers are supposed to be one the one with all the picks for the next few years. And lo and behold, because they moved up last year, Carolina Panthers picked last in the first round. They get Xavier Leggett. So that's Mingo last year and Xavier Leggett. Uh, so they, they definitely did get some help for, uh, for Bryce Young because they took uh, Jatavian Sanders uh, tight end out of Texas. I think he's the, this, the next tight end that came off the board after Brock Bowers. Uh, so, I mean, Jatavian Sanders, Mingo, Leggett, they're trying to get some help. Then uh, Jonathan Brooks. So, I mean, I, I guess, you know what I'm saying? I, I guess they're trying to finally get some help for Bryce Young. They say, are you not going? But my thing is like T Higgins and are you been sitting out there? And the only reason why I said that is St. Brown just got 30, right? He just got 30 in the slot which is crazy. So if a slot receiver is getting 30, the Eagles went right back and pay AJ Brown 32. So the new mark is now for a, a elite receiver. We talking Jay Jettis. We talking Devonte Adams. We talking Tyreek. Like we talking about elite receivers in the NFL going to get 30 now, 25 at the least, right? Cause Debo getting 25, AJ was getting 25, but now he's getting 32. So they're giving AJ an extra 7 million a year. So a person like IU and T Higgins can go easily get 30. That's the only reason why I said this because they drafted Ricky Pierce. So it's like, yo, they got to be thinking that they're going to trade IU. You can't pay Debo 25 McCaffrey, all the money he getting paid and then pay IU 30 million. You gonna have to pay IU with at least and if IU get 30 million is Debo going to turn around and want to get 30. You know what I'm saying? This is the ego league. Like what are we doing? That, that's the only reason why I said that they drafted him. I thought like maybe they, they maybe they're going to trade Ayuk, but then they didn't do it up until the point. Like in, in a playoff window, like the Niners is on, like you would be thinking if the Bengals or the Niners was going to trade T Higgins or Brandon Ayuk could have been first round. So now I'm like, maybe they're going to just pay him and deal with the deal with the tax. But then I was like, if you're going to pay him and keep him, Draft the draft and Pierce all it just kind of threw me for a loop in the first round. Like I was like, I was kind of surprised by that. Uh that's what that's why that came up, uh came about anyways. Cause I think a lot of times people be thinking I'll be trolling. I really don't. I really be honestly want to know. Like, cause I'll be in my head thinking about like what I would do or how I would do. Is it my fist not bought up? Me and my other cowboy fans since I already know what type of year this is about to be. <laughs> He said Broncos should have wanted a dog, but got Bo Nix is not a bad pick. It's just the problem that they paying the Steelers thirty eight million dollars to play uh, Russell Wilson is the problem. You wish Armstead good luck. Yeah, he's on the Jaguars. Let him go and pay Purdy. Hmm. 
Yeah, uh, Armstead is a great addition for the Jags. They need some locker room guys like that, veterans. All right, round two. The Buffalo Bills take Keon Coleman, who's been like lighting up the media uh, <laughs> to, for all the crazy reasons. Uh, Buffalo go Keon Coleman. Chargers go Lab McConkey. What do y'all think about uh, the two receivers taking it the first of round two? Now, round two is always interesting because it's every team that got to sleep on did they get their guy or did they not get their guy? Did they not address the biggest issue in on day one on the first round? And hey, we got a chance to move up and catch everybody slipping and take the guy that's left that we thought was gonna be off the board in the first round, or we thought this guy would be picked by now. Like I say, like the first 10 picks in the second round is we thought this guy was a first rounder, but he fell. What do you think about the Bills getting Keon Coleman and the Chargers getting Lab McConkey? Macy's jackets. He said, can I zoom in a little bit more? I can go full screen. I can go full screen. Whatever, whatever, what, hey, look, whatever you would like, uh, Coop, whatever you like, I can go full screen. Shout out Buddha. We got buttons around here. We got buttons around here, Coop. All right, so. What do y'all think about Bills and Chargers receivers first two? The Chargers bombed last year in the first round at receiver, so um, do you think Lab McConkey is gonna be nice with Justin Herbert? Keon Coleman to the Buffalo Bills. He'll get looks. Josh Allen is gonna put it up. I don't know. Now you gotta say, is it another receiver in the second round or third round that got taken that's gonna be better than Keon Coleman and Lab McConkey? I get the. I know the Patriots fans are going to be hoping that uh, their poke is going to be better than McConkey and Coleman. Uh, you, you you go down. Uh, Adonai Mitchell. I think you just my 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 uh, my unprofessional opinion. I think Adonai Mitchell is going to be better than Keon Coleman and Lab McConkey. That's just my, that's, that's my opinion. Like when the Tennessee Titans picked Dez Fitzpatrick and not Amon Ross St. Brown, the fan base was livid. And this could be one of those situations you look back on and say, will Adnan Mitchell be a better pro than Keon Coleman and Lab McConkey? The Falcons first pick was great. Second pick Rook. Uh, I, I don't know. With, it, I, if you were going to go, if you're going to go D line and Newton and, and Tavondre sweat Fisk was on the board. I ain't so, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I could be, we could be proven wrong in the, in the, in the future. Chargers offense did enough to win games last year. They all defense always say, I don't know, man. I, I, those, them first couple of picks, I don't know. Now the commanders always pick good D linemen. They got Newton. I was sitting there thinking like if the Titans, like when they made the picks they made, I said the Titans could get sweat or Newton in my head. I was telling y'all that like in my second round, when I was going through mocks, I was like, yo, if, if, if sweat is there, bro, like I want him. So commanders go Newton, a uh, uh, interior lineman with a little bit of injury history, but great hands quick can play inside out uh de definitely a versatile lineman i think the commanders did great with their picks early on uh polk uh a good receiver uh for the the patriots need need help at a uh, at receiver um i like the pick and then let's get into it let's talk about it to vondre sweat outland trophy winner to the tennessee titans to play next to jeffrey simmons jeffrey simmons was so happy on social media uh, when we picked Tavondre Sweat, I couldn't have been happier getting JC Latham and Tavondre Sweat. Like the Titans got their ass whooped up front, and let's 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 address the elephant in the room, right? Let's address the elephant in the room before we go on to the next uh, portion of this this uh, draft board. Yeah. Titan fans was mad. Yo, Twigs, what up? Titan fans was mad about Sweat, and I was like, we gave up a hundred yards rushing to everybody's backup running back last year, the Texans, the Colts, 
you name it, they ran on us for a hundred yards. It don't matter what team it was. And to get an Outland Trophy winner who is arguably the best interior lineman in this in, in college football last year and in this draft, I was confused at fan the fan base being mad at the pick. Because that's the guy I wanted. I wanted Atlanta to get him, but we took some unknown dude from Clemson. Because at this point, you're saying that let's go the rest of the second round after this pick. The only pick that you could have said in position and need that we would have wanted instead of Tavondre Sweat would have been Adonai Mitchell. Because Titan fans wanted a receiver in the first or second round. But I'm just like, bro, you drafted a wide receiver in the first round two years ago in Traylon Burks. You're going to move him to the slot. You got a new offensive-minded coach. You drafted left tackle finally. Your right tackle that you drafted will be back. You got D Hop and uh Calvin Ridley. You got two thousand yard receivers. Do you want to go receiver again? Or do you want to stop the run and give Jeffrey Simmons some help so he don't get double teamed every play? I I love, not like I love Devondre Sweat at that spot. We in my mind, anybody correct me if I'm wrong, I felt like we got two first round players in our draft. Somebody stop me. Somebody stop me, man. I felt like we got two first round players in the draft. Bro, JC Latham is six is six 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 seven three forty two. Tavondre Sweat is six is six five like three bro, like we just got monsters. <laughs> we just got monsters up front to go with a team that got pushed around physically last year, a team that's not known for getting pushed around physically, a team that had a head coach that was so physical. Nobody wanted to hire him because they thought he was too physically imposing. I was happy. Now, what what did you think about Rook uh, Twigs? Uh, So I I went back and looked at it. Um, I think that they're looking at it as, Grady Jarrett's coming back off a torn ACL. He has two years left on his contract. We got David on Yamada from the Saints. He was a good addition. Those are both good D tackles. They're vets. They can kind of coach this guy up and mold him. He has a lot of raw, like, athletic skills. He's very, very raw. He's not really po- polished as a pass rusher, but he could pretty much play up and down the defensive line, and we're going to a 3-4 defense. So he could be used on the edge. He doesn't have to be just in the middle of the defense. Uh, but I thought it was a reach. I thought we should have took the dude from Texas or or at least the guy from Illinois or trade back and then take Rook because he was he was like he was going to be there. He was down the draft board. He, it's best available. He was he wasn't even on the first page. I had to scroll and find that guy and be like, who the hell is that? Because <sighs> I never watched. I don't watch Clemson. I don't give a damn about Clemson. So I was just like, uh. Why the bitterness about Clemson, bro? Clemson's I, they a good just program. Play a, they, they play in a weak conference. I think that they got conference a, they got a good is weak. Program, though. No, they're not bad. Like, like I like when AJ they get Terrell. To play I like Grady Jarrett. Like Clemson ball, though. You got to, you got to get Clemson in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. When they get, when they get there, when they get there. But they I just don't like that. We we took a lot of Washington guys. I don't mind Penix. Um, I don't mind Penix. It's I, controversial. Did, were, were you whatever. you surprised that Penix got drafted? I was very surprised, but then I thought about it. The thing is, the way I see it, we're going to lose draft picks because Kirk Cousins is an idiot, and he came out and said he was talking to uh, Kyle Pitts, tampering. We're going to lose draft picks next year, for right, sure. So, so, let, me, so uh, let, me, let me ask you something. What's up? When Michael Pennis got selected, did like somewhere in the back of your hind, like time freeze, stand still for a moment, and all you heard was undefeated. Just like come through your brain waves and you got thinking, man, I don't want to see Buddha. He said the Falcons was going to take a quarterback this draft high. He said Kirk Cousins was a two year expensive bridge. He said he's another dear car. Maybe we sign him and trade him, even though he got a no trade clause and went and tamper. And he went on the online and got mad and pulled a, a, ta- a Ryan Tannehill tantrum and said he was furious that he wasn't notified that they were going to take a quarterback in his draft, even though Desmond uh, Ritter and Tyler Heineke <laughs> was gone. Is it that shot by Buddha is always, <laughs> always undefeated? I got to thinking. Yeah. yeah. You, got to, you got to thinking. You was like, man. That's crazy. Like he told me this was gonna happen and it <laughs> happened exactly the way it happened. He said it was but but Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, arguably 
as far as just turning the ball loose, y'all might have got the best QB in the draft, like somebody that's just going to throw lasers. That man has a – he can sling it. I think he's the best pure pocket passer. Um, but but also, like, the injury concerns kind of concern me. Two torn ACLs, he tore two rotator cuffs, and the throwing shoulder. Those aren't really um, – those aren't really injuries that that kind of just go away. Like that that that's a that could come back and bite your ass down the road. Is what I'm trying to say. And he's 24 I mean, years he old. He's gonna be playing in a dome. He got he don't have to come. Like he has no pressure to play this year one. Like he really let really Kirk really Cousins, can work on his let, body. Like let, if, if I'm Michael, if Pena, Kirk Cousins comes out and throws a pick, bro, these fans gonna be bro, like, this, this is what I'm saying though. And then he's gonna be right back into the mode I said y'all was in last year. Listen, I know is, and I, I don't want that. Right, but this is what I'm saying. Right now, he needs to hire the best. He needs to go to LeBron James and Tom Brady and say, who trained you? What do you eat? And, and <laughs> that, get in shape. Bro, yeah, like, just get, right get, now, yep. he don't need to think about nothing about football. He need to call LeBron James and Tom Brady and say, who do who trains you and what do you eat? Facts. Literally it's, get your ass in there and, and get right. It's a perfect situation for him. It's no pressure on him, right? All the pressure's on Kirk Cousins. So if he really just go get his body healthy, if I was him and his agent, I'd be like, yo, we trying to heal this year. And, yeah, and, we and are I would resting. be telling him I don't even want to play the second half of the season or later. It's perfect for, yeah. for Phoenix. It's perfect I, for Phoenix. I'm excited. I want to see him in the preseason. I want to see him in the preseason. I want to see him just make some throws. I mean, he. the other thing, too, that people don't talk about, about the Phoenix, it, Phoenix is fast, bro. He ran a 4-5. Yeah, well, he need to get on it. Bron, Bron that got man the ACH ran a 4 pop up in the uh, test then. With, with, a four with five Tom for Brady a guy on, with two torn ACLs Tom, is crazy. Tom Brady threw for five thousand yards at forty five. He need to get, get he need to get on whatever he on. Yeah, talk to Brady because, yeah, I mean, if he takes his first snap and it's two years later, he's going to be taking his first snap at twenty six years old, which is kind of to me it don't even wild. matter if he's twenty six though. As long as he look plays Jordan, well, Jordan, it doesn't matter. Jordan Love, Jordan Love, perfect situation. Got to sit for three four years and come in. No pressure. Yeah. They, as a pro, mm. I mean, look, this is just me speaking. As a pro, mm -hmm. if he, Penix is going to get top 10 money. He probably going to get $5 million a year like like Justin Fields to sit the bench. Bro, let me stack up $10 million before I ever hit the field. <laughs> That's nice. You know what I'm That's saying? Nice. Like, I'm in Atlanta. I'm kicking it. I'm chilling. Yeah. I'm in the yeah. South. He got his white sunglasses on. I would just be taking care of my body and staying in shape. I don't care if I'm 26 by the time I touch the field. Because guess what? My the financial part of my life, I done made investments. I done paid off my cribs and cars. I'm chilling now. You know what I'm saying? I'm only spending money on my body. No diddy. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So then <laughs> he said Brady didn't get touched for 15 <laughs> years. Hey, listen, he ain't finna get touched sitting on the bench watching Kirk Cousins get his neck broken either. This is perfect. Because he didn't Our really get hit that good, much. Our look, line is good. Look, he didn't. I, 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 other than the playoffs, I didn't see Pennis get touched this past season. He was just standing back there just throwing dots. And that's why all their offensive linemen got drafted, bro. That whole offensive line was big as shit. And the D-line, we, we pretty much looked at Washington and said, yeah, we'll just take your two captains. Give me the offensive captains, give me the defensive captain. We'll take both those guys. All right, unsung team in the draft, Los Angeles Rams get Braden Fitz, another high-level D-lineman. What better way for them to get Jerry Verse and Fitz, one-two in the draft, have Aaron Donald gone? And Blake Corum in the third. Bro, that Golly. like the Rams had a dirty draft. Like, bro, if Huge Aaron Donald draft, was leaving bro. and I got Jared Verse and Braden Fitz, like they ain't Aaron Donald. But I mean, that's as good as you gonna be able to pick at where they were picking in the draft to get one of the most athletic interior tackles and arguably the best edge that was coming out of the draft. Arguably, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was between him and Dallas Turner for sure, and Law too, but Law too. Medically Latu retired got, like, twice. Impulse is mad because Latu got injury issues. So I mean, I would have been he thinking medically Dallas retired. Too. That man medically retired Beasley? twice. All right, so that's the that's Eagles. crazy, bro. Eagles another team hiding, waiting. Man, in the wings. what a draft! They get Cooper what DeGene a draft. on top of getting Quinn Quinn Mitchell. Listen. A lot of people want, including the Titans, want to draft him and put him in free safety. Let me teach you so how to vibe. Getting, I wanted him too, bro. Get, getting to the, I mean, if you go look at the board, the Eagles, the Eagles got like two top five corners, DBs out of the draft, like like safety, free safety, strong. It don't matter. Yeah, they got two of the top five uh, secondary uh, players off the board. Getting Cooper DeGene, 
uh, at 40. Then the Saints luck up and Kool Aid McKinstry, who who I thought would have went a little bit higher, goes to the Saints. That shit pissed me off. Perfect man. That shit situation pissed me off. for the Saints to get Kool Aid. Um, they didn't have to trade. Like, bro, he's there. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just Cooper DeGene and Kool Aid just fell to them um, in the draft. And I was like, man, it's some teams that had late picks and probably didn't think certain talent was going to be on the board and just uh just got lucky and then here come the texans kamari lassiter georgia defensive back so you go three straight defensive backs cooper DeJean, kool-aid lassiter go to three good teams the eagles saints and texans and the, and the saints are only bad because of Derek Carr. let me be clear and say that um they needed a receiver. I'm surprised they didn't get a receiver. Who? The Saints. I mean, they got they they got Shahid and Olave. I'm pretty sure like they're gonna make other moves and the way they want to go about doing the receiver. Because I think Shahid is injury prone, though. That dude's always hurt. The thing, like, I think a lot of teams pass on Adnan Mitchell, but I think he's gonna be a dog for the Colts. I like that team. guy, man. I think he's gonna ball out too. You know what I'm saying I, he's I really not think, he's not uh, the same build as DK. He's not nowhere near the same build, but it's gonna be the same draft story. And like two, three years ago, like, how the hell did he fall to the second round? Because he's good. He, I mean, he's really good. I was pissed off when the Buccaneers got uh that receiver from Washington in like the third round. He said like, would be a beast if he's healthy. I mean. I'm just, he's I'm not good, crazy about taking somebody rusher. first round. Like we did that with Caleb Farley and you see how it turned out, bro. Somebody neck and back injuries don't fix themselves. Especially neck. neck and back injuries don't, don't fix themselves. Carr was done when he got traded from the Raiders. Oh, just nobody, everybody argued with me until, uh, until they realized that how right I was. Um, I've been said Derek Carr was cheeks. So you go that, that. Cooper DeGene, Kool-Aid, Lasseter, Max Melton from Rutgers. You go defensive back, defensive back. All those teams were thinking like these guys clearly would have been off the board by now, but apparently they still wasn't. And then the Raiders go Jackson Powers, Johnson, uh, the the Packers go. That's Adrian a good Cooper. pick, man. Panthers come back with Jonathan Brooks. Uh, some they they really needed getting Xavier Leggett and Jonathan Brooks. And yeah, Jatavia like it was Sanders, a good so they got running back one, tight end one, and wide receiver one, like back to back to back to, uh, picks. Like wasn't bad for the Panthers offensively, uh, trying to build around. Now this is what I thought. I thought this is what they would have done last year. Right. It's like draft the QB and already have in mind what you was gonna put around him, offensively. Because they got Deontay Johnson from the Steelers, so now you got Deontay, you got Leggett, you got um Mingo from last year. Yeah, Mingo. So he, Mingo should take a step forward. Uh, I like Deontay Johnson. Adam Thielen's old ass is still there, or did he retire? I ain't sure. I mean, Chubba Hubbard and Jonathan Brooks. Now you got two running backs. Like, I mean, they got they, 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 and they Miles got Sanders. Better. They got they Miles got Sanders too. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, is this what I thought they was gonna do last year? They, I, I feel like they dropped the ball for. Like, if you watch them play, people's talking about Bryce. And I'm like, bro, they had the one. They had between them and the Titans. I said probably like one of the worst lines in football. And then there was nobody like when I watched the game, like who is he going to go to with the football? Adam Thielen was cooking in the first half I'm of the saying, season. Like, I'm Thielen not wasn't lie. always out there though. So I was no, like, no, no. you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, I double Thielen yeah. who's getting the ball. Like they, they, like they don't have the line to run the game, cooked. run the ball. Yeah. Like they don't, can't protect. Like they wasn't good at nothing last year. Giants go Newbin, Mason Smith to the Jays, Chris Jenkins to the Bengals. San Steele to the C- Commanders and Zach Fraser. Adonai Mitchell, I feel like, was one of the steals of the second round. I feel like he was somebody that was fringe first round, like top of the second. I, in my mind, I think he's going to be better than Coleman and McConkie. I'm sorry. Hey, chill on McConkie, bro. What you mean? He's going to the Chargers, bro. Like, the Chargers have been bombing McConkie's, offensive. McConkie's going to cook. You know what I'm saying? McConkie's going to cook. Mike, Mike Williams and Keaton Allen is gone. The That's first why round he's receiver they got last year from TCU was a was a bust. Yeah, Quentin Johnson. So I'm saying cheeks, like you put McConkie out nice. there like is it, he's a main target. Nah, well I mean <laughs> they they're gonna they gotta move him around a lot, but McConkie he's nice. He's, he's nice, nice, but he I'm saying like he's nice in in a, in a, in the Georgia scheme, bro. I'm saying like he he can't he's not a one in the NFL. Uh, no, he's not a dominant. Like he's a he's a great slot guy. So whoever they got outside, better ball out or else. They ain't got nobody. They two outside guys is now playing for the Bears and for the Jets. 
it might be nasty for Justin Herbert. They about to hand the ball off a lot. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. All right, so no, uh, Michael Hall Jr., Patrick Paul, Marshawn Nealon, Chris Braswell, Bullard. Bullard was a safety I thought would have went higher from Georgia. A pure safety. Come on, Bullard's a baller, he, bro. He's, he's a That's... pure safety. I think he's going to be good. Uh, he went to the I wanted he went to the too. perfect team though. He went to the Packers. They already got a good defense. He gonna be able to just kind of roam out there. They picked up Xavier McKinney, bro. They got him and Xavier right. McKinney. I mean, I, if we didn't get Devondre De- Sweat, I was thinking if they was off the board, we was gonna go safety. I was thinking it was the gonna be Cooper DeGene or Bullard. Nice. I, I, I thought one of those two guys was coming to Nashville, but now I'm that saying, was the best player on our defense, bro. That was the best player on Georgia Come on, defense. Rand, call Justin Simmons and get him in Nashville now. Let's just make it happen. We got the money. We got thirty, forty million left over. Go, go get, go get Justin Simmons and put him in the in that two tone in blue. We need a corner, bro. The Falcons just neglected cornerback. They're like, oh no, we'll be all right. Blake Fisher. Cole Bish. Now I thought at thirty five y'all was going Kool Aid or Cooper DeGene. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, Cole Bishop. Why would we not take DeGene? That doesn't make sense, man. I, Rick I don't Straw, know. Rosen Garden, uh, so Matia, and then Renardo Green. Uh, I ain't gonna lie. This second round, arguably, has as many good players in it as the first round. Yeah, the, honestly, I like I like days two and three better than day one because like you really find the the gems and a lot of the guys that dropped that should have went higher. Like I, I just enjoy that personally, and the picks aren't as long. Yeah, AFC South gonna be fun, Reginald. TJ Tampa, I, I think TJ he could be. Tampa, bro. I think, I think yeah. he could be a uh, uh, one of them people that's I like how he fall. All right, let's go to the third corner. round. All right, just give me some names. I'm not going to go in order because we in the later rounds. Uh, who are some people that y'all seen in the third round that y'all thought would have went a lot higher that you think is going to be? Um, I think Kamari, I mean Cameron Kitchens to the uh, to the to the Rams is going to be nice. Uh, instinctive player. Uh, Luke McCaffrey was a player that I thought later in the draft. Uh, is gonna that, help he team. went early, bro. He went super early. He 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 went with the hundredth pick. The reason why I said Luke McCaffrey is like, bro, he's gonna be a pro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying like, yeah, he's gonna, have, he gonna is, get every piece yeah. of training in the world to run to do to be a slot receiver. Uh, it's like TJ. It's like TJ and JJ, bro. It's just like, yo, if these guys are in your family, you might want to draft them. I'm going through. I'm trying to see now. The Bengals got Jermaine Burton. I was hot. I was mad. I was mad. I ain't gonna lie. If y'all ain't never seen Jermaine Burton play, like third down game on the line, he gonna get it. He gonna catch the ball. Then the Rams yeah. got Blake Corum and Cameron Kenches in the third. I was like, they Corum's a stud. And then I'm thinking like they they already got uh Kyron Williams. So him and Blake Corum is like, bro, they they they're gonna be able to catch the ball out the backfield and they're gonna be able to run it tough. And then That's a getting, tough one-two punch. They got, Fisk, they got Fisk and Jared Verse. Like, their first four players are like, yo, you kind of like squint your eyes like, ooh. Steelers got Roman yeah, Wilson. That, um, I, I don't know how good he's going to be for the Steelers, but, I mean, he's a solid player. Uh, They got a history of getting those late-round receivers, bro. Yeah, they do. Who, who, who else in this round three y'all seen? He said the gene only fell in the drag because he's a white cornerback. Honestly, if he was back, he would have been a lottery pick. I I agree. He he probably he probably goes at the top of the second round at at latest. Uh, if he yeah. if he was like, to be, <laughs> I'm gonna be real. But I, but to be to, but to be fair, Cooper DeGene, Kool Aid, uh, Max Melton, uh, uh, Lasseter, all of them went like back to back to back to back. So it may have been more of a team need because he still was the first one taken out of that group. It may it may have been more of a team need. The teams uh felt like the value at corner wasn't top of the top or middle of the first round. Because I mean, think about it, Quinn Mitchell and uh and um and uh from Bama uh was was taking twenty oh Terry on honor. Terry on is twenty two and twenty four. So I mean cornerbacks kinda went late anyways. Uh Kamari Lasseter is gonna be a steal, bro. Oh, man. Him, and jo- him and Javon Bowler were the best two best two defenders we had on that defense.
I like that linebacker y'all got from uh, North Carolina too, by the way. I think that was a good pick. Oh, that was a great pick. Uh, let's see. Let me get up into round four, see if they got round four up here. You know what's crazy yeah, about that pick for Rook? We traded up for that dude, bro. They don't got round four's board up, but I can go to uh, I can go to ESPN and get round four. We traded up and got the dude from Clemson. That was going to be there if we just sat there and waited. That shit's crazy, man. I can just do this and go to round four. Jatavian Sanders, uh, Panthers took him at one, which I thought was a good pickup. The Broncos went and put Troy Franklin with Bo Nix. Um, Cedric Gray to the Titans. I was so happy. Like, we needed a weak side backer. Dude, is, dude really should have probably went way earlier, but an instinctive just tackling machine. Uh, <sighs> Chargers get Justin at that D tackle. Uh, Kyrie Jackson to Oregon. I mean, from Oregon to to the Vikings. Like, I think he could be a steal, a tall corner. I ain't going to lie. I like tall corners. I don't know if it's just a Madden in me, but I really feel like those tall corners do well in the NFL when you kind of like zone them and put them on the outside. Um, Javon Baker uh, to the Patriots could be a contributor. Uh... Eric all to the Bengals. Bengals always going to find some useful tight end. Uh, they got a lot of experience. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of anybody else that, uh, Cade Stover going to go get to play with, uh, what's the tight end that played for, at Dallas. That's on Texans now. Uh, Dalton Schultz. Dalton Schultz. That's gonna be he gonna he gonna get to go learn. Uh not a lot of running backs in this league. Uh TJ Tampa to the Ravens. Ravens get two uh young corners to go out there. Um That's a great pick by the Ravens, bro, because they already got Kyle Hamilton. Jaden Hicks was a guy, a safety from Washington State that I, I looked at. I like uh I wonder how he's gonna pan out. He goes to the Chiefs, six two can play. He he's a star he's a star safety. He can play in the box and he can play back deep. That's kind of why I liked him. But when we took James Williams late, it, I, I understood they was trying to get value at that position late. Let's me feel like they still they like the Titans still look it might be in play for uh, Justin Simmons. He said the Gene's a liability in man coverage. Kool Aid went second round. Should have gone first. Yeah, I mean you got you got the Gene, you got Kool Aid, you got Lasseter, you got Max Milton. They all went do 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 do. I don't think the gene going to be a liability in man because of his size. That dude's athletic as hell, bro. He returns kicks but too. I, I, I really think that the teams that draft him is going to play him in free safety anyway. So they, from, from what I've seen, if the Titans was drafting the gene, he's going to play free safety. So I, I'm pretty sure any, every team that get him is going to put him in that free safety role. And he going to be back yeah, there playing with... They said they are going to use him like Malcolm Jenkins. He's going to be playing back there playing with uh, CD, so... CD going to be the perfect safety from him to get to learn up on the no Diddy. Uh, All right. So let's go through round five. See who got a steal in round five. Uh, I think we took another lineman. I don't, we went just D line. Not D-line. a bad pick in the, in the fifth. We got Brownlee. Brownlee felt like he should have went, but he's not six foot. He's one of those slot corners. I don't think a team is gonna gonna really spend like a high pick on a slot corner, but I think he's gonna be a dog for us. Uh, Eichenberg, linebacker out of Ohio State for the Raiders. I, the, the, the Ohio State just pump out linebackers. I ain't gonna lie, especially like interior linebackers. Now let's talk about the Saints fans. Spencer Rattler. Last year, y'all took uh, the dude who took like the little uh, sus pictures, Jake Hayner. This year, y'all go get Spencer Rattler. And now, this is just my little joke, Saints fans. Don't be mad at me. He got the same number of wins as Derek Carr. <laughs> Him and Derek Carr got the same number of playoff wins. Spencer Rattler, bro. I don't know about that. Kid. Yeah, the gene is gonna play gonna play safety though. 
Hey, well, tell me about the Alabama running back, man. We drafted him. I don't you know why. About Jason McClellan? Jason yeah. McClellan is a three-down back. He can block. He can catch it. He can run it. Tough between the tackles. He's not going to be, like, super flashy. He kind of like Blake Corn. You know what I'm saying? But he's, a little, he's bigger. But why, though? We got we got. Because that means Algiers is probably going to get traded. Are you going to trade a thousand yard back? Are you going to run uh, Bijan and, and uh, McClellan? Like, Algiers is probably. Look, McClellan is a guy that, like, him and Blake Corm could help any team. They're winners and they know what to do. You see what I'm saying? And we got him late. We got him I, late. I, 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 I feel, feel like it's one of those best player on the board type of things. Like, he I mean, can help he your team. He balls out great. Great. Jeremiah Trotter Jr. to the Eagles. Legacy pick. Um, Did uh, Jerry Rice's son get drafted? Did he yeah, end he up got drafted, drafted to the Chargers like seventh round. Golly, how did that man fall so late? He was projected to go in the third or fourth. I don't know. It might, it, I, his routes don't look clean. I ain't gonna lie. Like he 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 looked like his like he don't run sharp routes. He's just he's that's, just I mean that's what sloppy. I was saying. I could be wrong. I mean he could turn out to be a dog for the Chargers. I mean, hell, I, he might be pick. as good or better than Lab McConkey when they get out there. Okay, bro. I'm just saying, like, you know, he's gonna play on the outside. McConkey gonna play in the spot. Like I mean, he's that, gonna bro. get his opportunity out there because because a uh, old boy from last year did nothing. He gonna get his shot. Disrespecting Lab McConkey is crazy. He's nice, bro. He's gonna be like a he's he's a Cooper Cup esque dude. Man, and I don't care if he was start if if Spencer Rattler was starting at uh, Oklahoma, they got good when they when they benched him and put uh, Spencer Rattler in. But is is this y'all uh, Drew Brees? Is this Spencer Rattler, bro? No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. Hey, the Saints. It's not. The, the, the Saints got Derek Carr, Jake Hayner, and Spencer Rattler, bro. Look, y'all y'all quarterbacks are like they fun to party with. No, Spencer diddy. Rattler stuck to South Carolina, bro. He's not. What's the he has a strong arm, but he's not nah bro. And this was a a, a little rumble in our fan base that we took Jaquan Jackson over Malik Washington. But turns out Jaquan Jackson is uh Tajay Spears' best friend and roommate at Tulane. And he's more of a special teams guy than Malik Washington. So apparently Kyle Phillips and uh Eric Garrow are out and Jaquan Jackson is gonna be our return man. And apparently they drafted him to play return man and slot receiver because of the new draft kick return rules. That's 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 the word that was just spoken by uh Rand. So y'all go back to back picks, Jace McClellan and Casey Washington. Yeah, I like Casey Washington, bro. I really like him. He's a he's a tall, he has all the measurables, ran a four four, he's like six three, big dude. I mean, he's not going to be out there starting right away. Yeah. We got deep receivers, but he's he's athletic. A steal in the six, Wingo going Wingo from LSU D tackle going to the Lions. I'm like, as if they need more. That was late, bro. How late? late. I thought he was going to go a lot earlier. Uh, maybe his size. He's just six foot. I don't know. Maybe it's that. Uh, we drafted a bunch of bunch of. Like this monster. This was a pick like, I like though. The Patriots got Joe Milton. Joe Pil- like Joe, Joe Milton gonna have every chance to, to to play with with uh Drake May. What's gonna be funny if Joe Milton outperformed him in camp. They won't play him. They wouldn't play him. They're not gonna play him over Drake May, even if he does do better. Because you drafted one in the first and you drafted one at the it end of the draft. Though, if he, yeah, hey, listen, they, it ain't like they paying twenty million for him. They just Less than $5 million for these guys. Yeah, but, like, imagine how bad of a look that would be. It don't matter about how it look. Did, 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 did you get your guy? Did you get your guy? I mean, Trey Lance wasn't the guy. Brock Purdy was. Yeah, I don't know. There we go. Sure. The Rams get another one. Jordan Whittington. I, I wanted to get him late. He's a receiver that played running back and receiver. If you watch Texas play, like this dude gets a lot of touches. Uh, kind of physical, can line up in the slot. I think he's gonna be nice for the Rams, because I mean they got Nakua. Nakua is a receiver that's like a running back when you get it. So I mean I I kind of understand that concept, like a receiver that has that like running back type of mold. I think he's gonna yeah. be effective for them, bro. They like the Rams. Low key, the Rams might have had uh, uh, one of the top drafts in the, this 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 year in all season. I ain't gonna lie. 
Trey Lance did get to play. He just stayed hurt. You think next year's yeah. draft class will be even better? I don't know about that. Did the Cowboys go quarterback at all? Uh, uh, I don't think so. So they're just right seven round all the Mr. Irrelevance. Uh, I don't even think we had. Right, a let's see. Bre- Brendan Rice to the Chargers could be one of the steals. Brendan Rice to the Chargers could be one of the steals. Uh, I like the guys we got late. Uh, let's see who's who's the irrelevant guys that could could wind up being good. Nobody knows who these guys are going to turn out to be. Uh, I like James Williams, safety at Miami. 6'4 safety. They're going to convert him. He's going to be a star, a star uh, convert hybrid linebacker safety. 6'4, 230. They got him to, to train him at, at backer and at safety. So he's going to be like a, a star, like specialty type of player. So that's interesting to watch to see what they do with him. Uh, who else is a name that fell? Uh, we got Jay, Jalen Harrell out of Michigan, edge rusher, a three down special team type of guy. These are guys like special, you know, Jalen Key, Alabama Jets. He might wind up playing for the Jets, but who knows? Who who knows who any of these Mister Irrelevance? It's gonna be somebody on this seventh round list that's wind up uh gonna wind up being making a roster and being a good player. Pacheco, Purdy, uh, guys as of late. I think James Williams and uh. And Harold both gonna make the Titans roster. Harold's kind of a question mark though. If Kayla Murphy is healthy, I don't think he makes the roster. But I know Brendan Rice uh, is gonna get chances. So overall, overall, like looking back at the NFL draft, who do y'all feel like the teams that uh, like give me give me all best and worst? Who had the best draft and who had the worst draft? Overall, who had the best and who had the worst? E2 tighten up Morris. Coach said, Hey, Coach said, Yo, y'all Bills fans been mighty quiet. What the Cowboys going to do with Lance? I don't know, man. It's like they're giving the last ride vibes. Mike McCarthy, uh, Ezekiel Elliott, Dak Prescott. This is their last ride, bro. Like, <laughs> they putting all of the eggs in the basket to say, like, if those, if those three guys pan out this year, the Cowboys are, are going to do it off their backs. You know what I'm saying? Like, no Diddy. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm just kind of confused at uh at how they getting down. Uh the Chargers got Brandon Rice. The Chargers got Brandon Rice. And the Bills got uh Frank Gore Jr. Yeah. That might that might be kind of interesting. I think the Cowboys had the worst. Off season, probably. Could probably be the worst too. off season, probably like Cowboys have to be in the top of worst off seasons uh, this year. Draft, I ain't gonna say that because they they got a they got position to need. The Cowboys needed a offensive tackle with Tyron Smith going out. Uh, I, I I I I see I see the thought process about you know they went there they went. I got an answer. He said so Lance draft. just since the bitch. Yeah, I mean, M- McCarthy didn't get an extension. Dak Prescott didn't get an extension, and you brought Zeke back. What does that say? It says that Mike McCarthy said that the 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 um free agency was not a was not a important for them. That they felt like they had enough guys coming back in the draft. So you seen what they did in the draft was was offensive tackle, edge rusher. They didn't draft anybody for like necessarily future. They drafted positions of need, and they feel like they got enough to make a run. Bills did. I mean, Coach said, why, "Why on earth would y'all trade the, the Chiefs to pick to get uh, Xavier Worthy?" I need to hear this. Like, I, I need yeah, that somebody that's a Bills fans to make logic of trading with the Chiefs. If the Chiefs say they want to trade with you and you the Bills, and they saying like, like, what is it on the board that the Chiefs are after? Like, that 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 the the Bills make a trade with the Chiefs to let the Chiefs get Xavier Worthy? I I, I need to see this. And the Bills need receivers. The fuck are you doing? The, 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 uh, the Cowboys did draft a linebacker, too, if I ain't mistaken. Interior line. And everybody said, oh, that's uh, Vander Esch's replacement. That's, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure I remember that vividly. 
Worst draft was Denver. Denver was not worst draft. Bo Nix is garbage. It, that's your opinion. Bo Nix might wind up playing all right for them. The problem wasn't that it was Bo Nix. The problem was they're paying Russell Wilson $38 million and they drafted Bo Nix because that money that they lost is Justin Simmons, Jerry Judy, and all the rest of the veterans they lost. Because, yeah. I mean, they follow in the mode I say I do. They got a, a cheap bridge quarterback in Zach Wilson that's got talent and then was just a former first-round pick. And then you take Bo Nix, a guy that Sean Payton, the offensive mind, wanted. They didn't trade up or trade back or fought. Like, they got the guy that everybody knew the Broncos wanted Bo Nix. He sucks, bro. It don't matter if you think he suck or not. I'm just saying, like, it could be a quarterback that's drafted that's worse than Bo Nix. Like, Drake May might be dog water. J.J. McCarthy. Like, Jaden Daniels might not work out. Caleb Williams might be horrible. And, I mean, Michael Penix might never be 100% healthy and you might have a complete disaster in Atlanta. Like, who knows? Like, the thing is, they, they feel good about a quarterback. They drafted a quarterback. Guess what happens when you draft a quarterback? If he sucks, you can cut him or let him go. It doesn't cost you much. He's not a top yeah, team. But he's, he's probably going to get two, three million stinks. a year. He was projected to go in the second or third round, bro. Don't matter. They got the guy they wanted. That guy. That we, guy we, we, we got Will Levis bluff. in the second, and, and thank God. At least he played in the SEC. Bro, Bo Nix left the SEC to go to Oregon to play in a weaker conference. Or, to run Oregon, Oregon, Oregon was good. Why is there? It don't matter. Because at, the end, of the, at hey, the end of the day, Brock Purdy, what team did he play for? Uh, I think Iowa. You see what I'm saying? Like, you don't even, it doesn't even but matter. But he's in it, a like, way better, all way better is, scheme. All that matters is, is he going to work for that team? And I say no, because fuck Sean Payton. Fuck the Saints. I don't like Sean Payton, like, personally. I, I That's... Sean Payton is the reason why I don't think it's going to work. But I mean, I ain't going to do like the, the player that bad. I mean, it was, a it's, it's the thing I always say. If you feel good about a young guy, go draft a young guy and, 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 and spend your money elsewhere. The problem is the money they're going to spend elsewhere. They spend it. They're paying the Steelers to play Russ. I mean, the, the Wilson yeah. trade didn't make sense for the Broncos, but if you're the Steelers, it's great. They didn't feel like Kenny uh-huh. Pickett was the guy. You still was able to trade Kenny Pickett. You basically swap him to get Justin Fields. And you got uh um Russell Wilson. Let me you got Russell you Wilson cheap. Now this is the thing people have to wrap their mind around. The Steelers get Russell Wilson for one point two million dollars. And if it's anybody yeah. out there that can convince me that Russell Wilson is a worse quarterback than Mitch Trubisky, Mason Rudolph, and Kenny Pickett, please hop your crazy ass in the Discord, put down the drugs and the lighter and the fentanyl, the heroin, all the stuff, the drugs that you got. Put it all down right now and hop in here and explain to me how the Steelers got worse by getting Russell Wilson and uh Russ, Russ and, well, Russell Wilson and uh Justin Fields for a third of the price of Mason Rudolph. Like you have to remember Mitch Trubisky was getting fourteen million a year in Pittsburgh. That's nuts. Come on now, like make it make sense. That's a heist. Come on. <laughs> So it's like, here's a playoff team that's going to get Minka and TJ Watt back healthy uh, that, that made moves in almost every position, offensive line, receiver, defensive, like help. Uh, they brought in, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, that linebacker. Bro, and they have no money tied up into quarterback. The, Steel- the Pittsburgh was- Steelers have less than $5 million tied in, in, into the QB position. So you would think they'd be able to stack their team, just fucking. So, stack but I'm, the I'm team. saying like they have the ability to do whatever they want, because they mm-hmm. when they traded uh Deontay, they they freed up eighteen million dollars and it was like a three million dollar cap hit and bonus they didn't have to pay because they traded them to the Panthers. So like you have to remember now they got Dante Jackson to play the slot now. So Minka back, yeah. T.J. Watt back, Dante Jackson in the slot, Joey Porter Jr. on the outside. You see what I'm saying? Like, like what they did was and got better. And you know the D line is D line is stacked, and they drafted O line and D line. They could use another receiver though. They got George Pickens. Oh, they got the kid from Michigan too. Yeah, they yeah, got Roman they're, Wilson. They're they're, they're going to be they solid. They got boy from the uh, they got boy from from the Bengals. I like Roman Wilson, bro. I What's think the little fast dude they got uh, Pittsburgh. Oh, Calvin Austin. That's what I'm saying. Like, like they, they and they got uh the they they got Najee and the other little running back that 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 uh balled out for them last year. 
Yeah, that other running back's better than Najee. He ain't better than Najee. He's just a good one-two punch. Like when Najee looked Najee, like he, he was running look, slow, bro. bro I, or maybe like, he's hurt. It ain't, he, maybe he's, he's slow. Hurt. It's Canada, bro. Like he's got, he's got that Cleveland Brown Tennessee Titan thing, bro. It's first it's first down. He's running the ball up the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real predictable. Real predictable. It ain't predictable, gonna be no yeah. pro play action. It ain't gonna be moving the pocket. Every it ain't first be no down is a fucking run. Yeah, bro. There's li they're, li they're literally gonna run into a brick wall with him, and then. On third down and six, like that's when the other little dude get the ball. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like nobody expected him to get it. He said, "Y'all hyping the Steelers up? Who was no, hyping no, him no. up? No, I mean that's bro, just yeah. speaking bro, facts who, on the talent the they have. Up? They were a playoff team that had uh, Mitch Trubisky, Kenny Pickett, and Mason Rudolph at quarterback. Like how was that that's hyping a testament, him up? That's a testament to Mike Tomlin. If you think Mike Tomlin could do that with those shitheads, I'm saying now like, you give them the better, quarterback. Look, they got better at every position." The, the the Browns got to pay uh, the Browns lost Flacco and they got to pay uh, Deshaun Watson seventy million dollars this year. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not hyping them up. It's just saying if I'm looking at it objectively, I'm saying they got better and they saved money. Like I've never seen a team get better at almost every position and save like thirty forty million dollars in the off season. Yeah, I bet my. I ain't saying they're gonna win the Super Bowl. I'm saying they've stacked their roster up and saved money. You still got TJ Watt. You still got uh, because it's look, dude it's, that's been it's, there for years. Hayward, uh, of uh, of the be it's no guarantee that uh that Caleb Williams will ever play better than than Justin Fields in in Chicago. I think he that will. I think he's true. a better player. There's no guarantee that that uh that that the that the but Bo Nix and Zach Wilson will ever play better than Russell Wilson was playing there or Drew Locke. They gave him a better better options though, bro. Even C.J. Stroud said, how come they didn't just build around Justin Fields and give him those same weapons? Because Matt Nagy ruined the culture there. Sometimes yeah, you got to so, move on, though, from a guy because, like, like – That's like, just bullshit, though, Like, bro. Trey Lance. I'm saying, like, it's the same situation. Like, Trey Lance couldn't stay healthy. Like, he's more athletic than Purdy, but Purdy's that guy. Like, <laughs> you put Purdy in. You see what I'm saying? Like, sometimes it just happened that way. Fields was good too, bro. His main well, playmaker was DJ well, I mean, Moore. I seen that's Fields like drop back and like throw the ball dead at a linebacker. I, but I seen Fields hit Quay Walker one time, and I'm like, he do realize uh, Quay right Walker play on the Packers, right? Like, yeah, I've seen him like I mean, close his eyes and throw the ball. And I don't know if that's culture, or but I mean, he's in a be better position Lack of now. Offensive line, shit. Now offensive he's line. in a good. He's in a good organization. He got a great coach, and he got a veteran to learn behind. That maybe he might beat out Maybe Wilson gonna clean some stuff up for him. And if it don't, guess what? It's only $5 million. It ain't $50 million like Kirk Cousins or Derek Carr or Daniel Jones. Like, it's $5 million. Like, wrap y'all mind around that Russell Wilson and Justin Fields is $5 million. And guess what? If they load up at every position and it don't work, they can go right back into next year's draft, load up, and go get whoever the hell they want. Yeah, they, yeah, they could. Yeah. You I think Justin Wilson Fields days beats is number, Russell They may be, but guess what? It wasn't because he played bad last year. It's because they tanked on purpose. Yeah, and Sean Payton's a dickhead. Bro, you 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 tank. You sent Russell Wilson to the to the to the uh, Steelers. Paid thirty eight million dollars to do it. Then you let go of uh, Justin Simmons and uh, and Jerry Judy. Like clearly, this is a tank job. <laughs> they yeah, literally was GM, like one game GM out of making crushed. the playoffs, and they tanked. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like they literally tanked. We all watched it on purpose. He said they only made the playoffs because the Bengals. You don't know who Joe Burrow's name is. Sure, Eugene, we're taking your cut. You don't know what Joe Burrow's name is. The Bengals QB. <laughs> what do you say? They only made the playoffs. I'm saying like, bro, bro the Steelers made the playoffs with Mitch Trubisky, Kenny Pickett, and Mason Rudolph. Please, can y'all say that again? I want you to look in the mirror, splash a little water in your face, and say, Mitch Trubisky, Kenny Pickett, and Mason Rudolph made the playoffs. Bro, if y'all can, uh, if you can get in this Discord and wrap your lips and say, I think. Mitch Trubisky, Kenny Pickett, and Mason Rudolph is better than than uh, Russell Wilson. Please get in here. I want to hear you verbally say it. I don't want to see nobody type it knowing it's some bullshit trolling. I need you to actually open your mouth, put your two lips together, and let air come out and say, I think Mitch Trubisky, Mason Rudolph, and Kenny Pickett is better than Russell Wilson. I need you to say it. If not, please shut up. I don't want to hear that. Like, just we just saying shit just to say shit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's Please uh, say fair, it. bro. Please say it. Please get in the Discord, put the headset on, put the mic, put the AirPods in, and say, I think that Russell Wilson is worse 
then Miss Trubisky, Mason Rudolph, and Kenny Pickett. God Wilson knows how those guys even like Mason Rudolph. I get it, but I mean, like the the fact that that, that Mitch Trubisky was on a twenty eight million dollar contract for two years makes no sense. Like, all right, Mitch Trubisky in the last two years got more than Flacco, got more than Baker Mayfield, got more than Jameis Winston, got ma- more than Heinke, got more than Mariota, got more than Cam Newton. Guy, got, like, bro, like I can just go down the list of veteran QBs that that Mitch Trubisky got more money in his contract than. Like, please make it make sense. Yeah, Mitch, say no Mitch, Mitch, I, said, Chicago, I, I, I said fix it. Look, I ain't, I ain't, bro, I'm saying, like, I need somebody to verbally say it, bro. I don't even got to say no deal. I need you to verbally, not like AI or nothing. I want you to verbally say, I think that Kenny Pickett, Mitch Trubisky, and, and, uh, and Mason Rudolph is better than Russell Wilson. And then I want you to factor in that Mitch Trubisky got paid $13 million more than Russell Wilson. I, I need you to just make it make sense. Like on paper for the Steelers. Like I need you to make the Steelers wrote a check for, for Miss Trubisky for $13 million more than Russell Wilson this upcoming season. I just need you to just understand that and wrap your mind around it. I just need, I just need y'all to do that. I just need you to I, like, bro. Cause we gotta, we gotta use logic when we talk in sports. It can't just be like, I thought of something and I said it right. That ain't how the shop work. The shop work is, I have to logically think about the things that I'm saying. And because I don't like a person, I can just say something. It's a lot of people I don't like, but I ain't going to just say something that don't make no sense. So if we're going, if we're going based on potential upside, you could theoretically argue Kenny Pickett. But if you're going to like a 50 million dollar quarterback that's been to the Super Bowl now. Right. Well, he's in Philly now. So I'm saying like, so, so, so pitch it is. So picture this, Mariota got $5 million to back up on the Eagles last year. Right. You see what I'm saying? Like, you gotta put the money with the player. You know what I'm saying? Like Kenny Pickett is cheaper than, Kenny Pickett is like four point something. He's cheaper than Mariota. Yeah, and he's better. Way better. Way better? Way Marcus better. Mariota's career I'd... stats is the same as Ryan Tannehill. Don't say way. Kenny Pickett may never throw for as many yards as Mariota did. Fuck Marcus Mariota, bro. He just saying that because you're a Falcon, man. Y'all got to stop letting the bias get out here, man. Stop being biased. That's why it's easy for me to win these conversations. I need y'all to stop being cheeks. biased. Huh? That guy's doo-doo. And wherever he went, if their starter goes down, that team's fucked. Just Ooh. like when Jalen Hurts went down, Marcus Mariota fucked the Eagles. The, no, nah, the Eagles had problems in the locker room way before Mariota. I'm saying they, regular they, season they with Jalen Hurts stuff just tore or whatever. Year. It was too much in the media yeah, last year. They, yeah, they like, were. There was a lot sure. of good players, but no, there wasn't a real team. Like last year, it's too a lot much. Of, a lot and of that comes from game, their head coach, They would win and they'd be complaining. You know what I'm saying? Like, all, that, all right, bro, what y'all got going on? A lot of that comes from the head coach, man. That dude, that dude talks a lot. Yeah. Hey, that's Philadelphia well, I still sports. Ain't had though, nobody getting here with these, these uh, nonsensical claims yet. Seven day Raven Joe Mo D Kane, what up? I still ain't had none of these nonsensical claims in here. Oh, nah, you probably won't. I don't think nah, anybody's probably going to hop in here and argue right, that. So, right, so, so when we talk about, like, draft this year, I, I, I love what the Rams did. I love what the Rams yeah. did. Um, and Ravens. I, I like the Ravens draft a lot. Who has had a, who has had a draft that oh, I said, ooh, we... Eagles got a lot of positions of need. I ain't gonna be mad at the Eagles offseason. As a whole, like Eagles offseason get bro, they got CD Deuce back. They got Saquon Barkley. They got Cooper DeGene and uh and Cunha Mitchell. Mitchell, bro. Like, I ain't gonna lie. Like, Eagles Eagles kind of got dirty this offseason. Like, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna be mad at the Eagles moves. Um, they still kept Darius Slay. Vikings was in a horrible position. When it's over with, JJ McCarthy, Donald the backup. Aaron Jones, JJ, um, Addison, uh, Dallas Turner. Like, okay, like I can I can see the, the yo the Lions had another good off season too. Uh, Lions a did really, a really good draft too. Ly- Lions had another good draft. Um, Packers had a good draft. Low key, the Raiders had a good off season. It just they still don't have that QB of the future because it ain't Minshew and it ain't Aiden O'Connell, but. I like the fact that they didn't reach. Minshew is not costing. They nothing. wanted McConnell. They wanted Penix. 
Yeah, but I mean, they got Christian Wilkinson to go with Max Crosby. They got uh, Brock Bowers to go with Meyer. Like, if you think about it, like the the Raiders are building the right way. You know what I'm saying? Like they they building saying like, look, trench warfare. We can't beat the Chiefs. Who's, with their, who's the who's the running back in uh, Oakland? They they let Jacobs go, but they got uh, what's gonna call it? Uh, Who Zaire Zaire uh, dude from Georgia that used to be? They got a couple guys. Hold up, Zamir White. Zamir White's nasty. He was good at Georgia. I just don't know if he's going to be the full-time starter. They really don't need... Like, they can go running back by committee. Hold up. Let me, let me look at their roster. Devontae Adams is going to be sick by week five, bro. By no, week five, he's actually, replacing I mean, the trade. Bro, like, they going... Um, they going twin tight end. Look. You know what I'm saying? Like, he probably going to get more looks, though. And Jacoby Myers, but they don't have it. But they don't have like Gardner Minshew. Maybe they win nine games. All right. Yeah, Zamir White, uh, Madison, Amir Abdullah. They probably oh, get, they probably Madison. Yeah, they probably they probably they probably go somewhere free agency too. He said, "I could say Giants." Giants had a good draft. Yo, yo, this this the first time I seen the Niners off season, and I'm kind of like. I like the jury's out. Niners is usually like the team that I'm like, man, how in the hell did they get all that? They got a, they drafted a receiver because I don't think they're gonna resign Ayuk. Texans had a crazy, uh, crazy draft and off season. Texans did. Who was I just the Bears, bro? Bears, Chicago. Yeah, man. I, I ain't, I ain't mad at the Bears off season at all. Uh, you get a Caleb AFC, Williams, then you AFC get Roman Dorsey. AFC North could be look. AFC North, AFC South, most improved divisions all season wise. All yeah, all four teams for the from yeah. the AFC South like got better, with the exception of Jaguars. Could have you could say treading water a little bit, losing really, but, but they got Gabe Davis. They got Gabe Davis and Brian uh, Tom like out of LSU. So I, 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 can I really say they got worse? No, uh, and they got Ark Armstead. Every team in the AFC South got better, and every team in the AFC North got better. I mean, you do when you you look at the Vikings, like I thought they like I thought the Vikings had no chance to in this draft if they didn't trade up, and then they got JJ McCarthy and Dallas Turner. Like, you're like, well, damn, Aaron Jones for cheap. Let me you know teach you how like, to wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? Like, they got two dogs. Dallas in Turner getting Dallas Turner was crazy that late. I thought we were going Dallas Turner at eight. I wouldn't have been mad at that. He said, who do I have as an underdog to the draft? The, the Rams. The Rams is a team that's under the radar that nobody talking about their picks. The Rams cleaned up, bro. They got, bro, the, Ram, the Rams got Jared Verse, Fist, Blake Corum, and Cam Kitchens. Like, that was their first four. And I'm like, wait Let me a minute. Teach you like, how that's to pretty buy. solid. Then they got Whittington late. Like, they got another receiver that's like that Puka Nakua mold. Like, here's, here's a receiver that's like a running back. So, I mean, you got two dogs at running back. You're going to have a bunch of screen passes with Nakua and uh, and uh, Whittington. Then you're going to have uh, Cooper Cup back healthy. Then they got Fitz to play interior where Donald was at. But then just think, Donald comes out, but then you put Fisk and uh, Jerry Verse on that same side where he was at. It kind of make up for it. It ain't Don Aaron Donald, but... I don't you know what know what about make up for it because motherfuckers got a double team Aaron Donald every play. You know what I'm saying? Like, but, but I get what, what you're but, saying, though. But what I'm saying is like, Okay, you can't replace Aaron Donald, but you can't put two dogs on that same side and give them both one-on-one -on -one looks where they don't know who right. to double. You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't really know who right. to block. Um, those are studs, bro. Those are day one starters. Com Commanders had a good offseason. Uh, Com Commanders got better. I'm going to say the team with the worst offseason. Every NFL team, the worst offseason, got to belong to the Cowboys and Dallas the Cardinals. Cowboys. Cowboys and Cardinals is like, they they fighting at worst off season. The Bills had a bad off season, but I ain't I don't I I, I the jury's out because they lost a lot of players, bro. Tre'Davious White, Poyer. Uh, I don't know. Gabe Miami Davis Miami Diggs. got smoked in in off season. Miami yeah, lost they did a lose lot. Christian Wilkinson. And you lost Xavier Howard. And some linebackers. Uh, yeah, they did because uh, Jerome Baker went to uh, the Seahawks. Yeah, so GG's to Miami. They don't have no cap space. And they're trying to pay Tua. We, it's some teams got worse. 
Miami's definitely one of those teams. Unless I don't, I don't even Panthers recall who they drafted. Impressive. But this is the thing about the Panthers. I don't think the Panthers is a quick rebuild. I think they're so bad that the trades that they make was you offensively looking at it. Mingo last year, Jonathan Brooks, Jatavian Sanders, Xavier Leggett, and uh and um um and Deontay Johnson. They got weapons now. I don't know about the offensive line if it's still dog shit, but I mean the Panthers actually did make some moves. But I'm with you, like, but see, they had a long road ahead. I think the Panthers dropped the ball last year. I think the Panthers dropped the yeah. ball last year. Looking back Signing on it, for, the, for, for what they did funny. with Bryce Young, they probably should have traded back and loaded up and fixed their team and then drafted their QB this year. Yeah, because literally they're just going to they're gonna get that they're gonna get that kid killed if they don't protect him, bro. Every time he looked up, there's, a, there's just no offensive line in Carolina. He's just getting smoked. Yeah, I I love that Cedric Gray pick late. Uh, she now we can look at the uh, we can look at the Titans' uh, new roster on uh, Mutt dot gg. Let's uh let's check this out. Mm. Titans. New I just roster. wish we would have got a cornerback, but I really wanted T.J. Tampa, bro. I really wanted the Falcons to get him, and then we just didn't why get I a go corner? to the zoom up looking at my big old Michael Jackson? Uh -huh. I right, look. Let's go to lineups and see like exactly what the titans did uh let's go look and see exactly what the titans did let's go to this screen all right so all right we knew the holes that the titans had jc latham right here uh now looking at what they said they was gonna do that will put bronsko here Raiden's here uh then we got that guy from the Browns, but he doesn't have a car uh, that will be right here playing backup tackles. Well, really, really, Raidens would be backup right guard, right tackle, and then Jalen Duncan would be out. Old boy from the Browns would be here and here. So, I mean, J.C. Latham going to play left tackle. Petit Freer coming back off of gambling. He had the same thing as Jameson Williams. So he'll be here. Sadiq Charles, Cushenberry, Scoro has picked his way back up. Offensive line looks tremendously better and it looks better at depth when you add in uh the guy from the Browns and Dylan Raiden's playing here and here. Um who knows if Chris Hubbard will be back at depth. Brunskill and Corey Levin can play guard and tackle on either side. Chig and Josh Wilder, this is a position that uh Rand said he still has we still got money, so it still may be a trade at tight end for the Titans. You said Muhammad Kamara, I feel like you're an underdog. Don't know enough about him. Uh, then Traylon Burks, former first round pick after seeing the draft that the Titans didn't go wide receiver in the second or third, lets me know that, uh, probably Kyle Phillips is probably, Oh, I didn't mean to do that. All right. Kyle Phillips is probably the guy odd man out. So that will put, uh, Jaquan right here. Cause he's going to be a kick returner and then they will put D hop and Westbrook here. And then Burks in the slot with uh, Jaquan, probably Kyle Phillips, maybe still on the roster. Cause the Titans don't run fullbacks. So Malik Willis probably out Mason Rudolph and he doesn't have a car. Tony Pollard, Tajay Spears, Julius Chestnut. And they picked up a couple of um, running backs and uh, undrafted free agents. I right. defense is what I'm happy about. Jeffrey Simmons, Tavondre Sweat, Sebastian Joseph Day, Keandre Coburn, Rashad Weaver, as uh, and um, Naquan probably gonna be. That's probably gonna be your front. They probably could still go get somebody. They got some guys on uh, undrafted free agents. They got you know, Tier Tart was an undrafted free agent. that turned out Legereus Need, Tita Bay, Awuzie, Roger McCreary, Caleb Farley. Uh, Brownlee, who I think is going to push Trey Avery out. And I think Brownlee uh, and McCreary are going to be dirty in the slot, very aggressive corners that can play inside out, luxurious need in the Wuzier. And I hope their father comes back healthy to give us some quality depth uh, at DB. Harold Landry, Arden Key on the edge. Kayla Murphy will be back off of injury. And you'll have Harold from Michigan will probably learn from Harold Landry, a perfect person to learn from. 
They can play that right edge, can play the run, can get to the passer, can play a three down, can guard out the backfield. Elijah Molden, who's our free safety now, I fully expect Justin Simmons to be right here. This is wishful thinking, but I I, I fully, because we, we want to see the CD Deuce right here, but I take Justin Simmons right there. Amani Hooker, James Williams, the converted, the safety that's going to play safety linebacker for us is going to be right here. He's going to play in the box as a, as like one of them Kyle Hamilton type safeties. Then you got Kenneth Murray Jr. going to play that uh, strong side linebacker. And now Cedric Gray is going to play this weak side backer with Jack Gibbons. And Otis Reese is going to play the backup spot right there. Kayla Murphy coming off an injury. Uh, the NCAA single seed and sack leader of all time uh, going to be coming back. So I, I, I like the direction that they're going in all spots. Uh, of course, Stonehouse will be back. Nick Folk, uh, it, it would be the kicker. And we'll see if any of those undrafted free agents push. So as of right now, Big Jeff, Devondre Sweat, Sebastian Joseph Day up front uh, with Arden Key and Landry on the edges. Uh, Kenneth Murray, uh, Cedric Gray uh, with on nickel, James Williams, six four uh, safety working in at that linebacker star hybrid spot on, on nickel downs with Amani Hooker and bro. I just need to see Justin. The only position we didn't get, which people was thinking they was going to put Cooper DeGene right there. If Justin Simmons comes at free safety, I'm not mad. I'm happy. Yeah, it's going to be. I mean, people didn't understand, uh, Calvin, that outside of Aaron Donald, Jeffrey Simmons is the most defense, most double team interior linebacker in the NFL the last three to four years. So you put Tavondre Sweat next to him with Sebastian Joseph Day taking over the spot with, where, um, uh, where um oh what's my boy uh I, I can't think left in uh Danico Autry Sebastian Joseph Day Jeffrey Simmons Tavondre Sweat that's beef up front it left the linebackers Landry Key Murray uh Cedric Gray Caleb Murphy Harold uh James Williams Jack it, it let the let the linebackers run it let the safeties play that's why I want to get Justin Simmons there with Hooker because you have two super really 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 top elite veterans playing deep. But Wuzier, Sneed, McCreary, Brownlee, we'll finally get to play aggressive at the line of scrimmage at defensive back. And then if Caleb Farley get healthy just to give us depth with his size and speed as a cover corner and then having uh, Brownlee right there, bro, the, the whole entire defense just got better in a, in a matter of minutes. You know what I'm saying? Because people don't understand what Jeffrey Simmons and, and Tavondre Sweat and Sebastian Joseph Day can do up front just – eating double teams and still getting by like, pushing the pocket. So just imagine on third down sweat and Jeff stunting, pushing the pocket in the middle with Landry with the bend on an Arden key on the edge. Like it really going to force teams to have to throw hot a little bit. Uh, on um, first time in, I can't tell you the last time the Titans had 2000 yard receivers returning. I just hope that trailing Burks can live up to their first round talent and moving back to the slot that, uh, Jaquan and, and, uh, uh, Kyle Phillips will be able to make some work. Nick Westbrook to me is good depth at an outside receiver that can block and catch the ball and get open. Uh, that, that's always productive. And now this new look offense with Will Levis with Tony Pollard and Tajay Spears, two running backs that, uh, that can catch it out the backfield and run it. Uh, it's going to be exciting to watch the difference, uh, how it looks. Um, I'm really interested in seeing what they're going to do with Josh. I, I like Josh and I like Chig. I think Chig is a talent. I still think they need another veteran tight end though. Just my, my by my opinion, because like Josh and Chig are like receiving tight ends. I need somebody that can get in and get their nose dirty. Um, but JC Scoro, Cushionberry, the left side of that line is gooned out. Uh, taking two top ten left tackles and then arguably one of the best centers in the league. And then you know Sadiq Charles. Dylan Raiden's bronze school NPF on the right side. Like it's a lot of talent out there too. So, um, set some, some, some high, high draft picks out there. They, they can develop with Bill Callahan. One of the best offensive, uh, line coaches of all time in NFL history. I hope, I hope we can get it together, man. He said, Trey who Traylon Burks. Now we're not talking about them Cowboys. Oh, rich. Now, now rich then finally showed up. Let's talk about that. Uh, let, let's talk about that draft. Rich. How you feeling? Y'all, y'all got y'all left tackle, but, uh, the rest, rest of y'all all season and draft. I don't know, man. Y'all got, um, y'all got Ezekiel Elliott coming back. 
<laughs> Dallas Cowboys looking real sus out there, man. I don't know. Y'all didn't make, um, in my opinion, bro, y'all, y'all probably had one of the worst off seasons. Y'all in the Cardinals. I just don't see like y'all didn't even try to move or try to roll or nothing. Y'all was just like, man, whatever happened. Nick Folk don't need to be pushed. He's been the best kicker we didn't had in, in probably a decade since Rob Baronis was there. We ain't had a look. Baronis was the last great kicker we had. Nick Folk. I don't think Nick Coke missed anything. Yeah, I I, I want to see what Caleb Murphy do this year. Healthy. He played great in uh no Kyle Phillips can't take Nick Westbrook's spot. Nick Westbrook is like six two six three. Always get touchdowns, always play hard, always block, always get open. I think Jaquan is going to take Kyle Phillips' spot. Him and Eric Garrard got to be looking for a job because they're going to use Jaquan in this new kickoff format. So, I, and, and he's faster than Kyle Phillips in, uh, in the slot. Like, he's a guy that, that, that had a lot of rushes in college, too. Yeah, Kyle, bro, when Mike McCarthy said he didn't need to do anything, I was just like, yo, is this dude high? Like, the, he not know what's going on in the NFL? Like, he's not like not even attempting to try to make the team better? I mean, he said he can't do anything. Yeah, I mean, Rich, for all intensive purposes, it looks like, now, this is just me. I'm, I'm not a Cowboy fan. It looks like he's just saying, yo, McCarthy, Dak, Zeke, run it one more time, and then we're gonna clean clean the shelf. Next Let me year. teach you how to vibe. Me and King, what up? What you think about the Packers draft overall? What you think uh about the players that they got? Let me teach you how to vibe. Now let's ask, let's ask a tough question out of the first round draft pick quarterbacks, Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake may Michael Penix, Jr. JJ McCarthy, Bo Nix. Who will be a Saints fans? Spentler Rattler. Who's going to be the best QB in this draft last year? Obviously was CJ Stroud, but as a Titan, I'm happy with Will Levis. As a Colt, you got to be excited about uh, Anthony Richardson coming back healthy. I don't know if any people got to watch him early on before he got hurt. He looked dangerous, That man was bro. a beast. I mean, like, like no diddy. When he pulled the ball out of the running back stomach and, like, turned it loose, it looked kind of effortless. And when he ran, it kind of looked effortless. But imagine Jonathan Taylor healthy. They dra- they've been drafting the offensive line. Anthony Richardson at quarterback. Adonai Mitchell in the slot, Downs, Michael Pittman Jr., Mo Alley Cox, Jonathan Taylor. Like the Colts eh, offense, but I'm still not crazy about the edge rusher. I still think they should have went uh, Dallas Turner, Jerry first. But could, to go with Zaire Franklin and DeForest Buckner, come on, man. Like, but at the same time, like, I don't know, my friend. Like, the Colts offense could be dirty. That's why I say AFC South, NFC North, like, two most improved divisions in football. I don't know, Reggie, bro. Like, the Packers got Bullard. I don't think you can think about how good Xavier McKinley and Bullard, Bullard can be at safety this year. Like, they could be some goons, like no fly zone type of safeties. Y'all got Josh Jacobs, uh, Christian Watson is back, Dobbs. Like, y'all got that tight end last year. Like, the Packers the Packers look good. The Lions look good. The, the Vikings, I don't know how they did it, but the Vikings actually came out of the draft clean. When it started, it looked like they weren't going to get anything. Dak playing hardball ain't nothing. Doing them but hurting Dallas because we can't get players. Yeah, y'all in a bad situation because, like, Dak, Zeke, C.D. Lamb, you lose Gallup, you got Cooks, you got, uh, bro. <laughs> bro, and if, if, if Guyton wind up not turning out to be a first-round left tackle, oh, my you know what I'm saying? Like, y'all gonna be in trouble, bro. Like, I ain't gonna lie. Like, y'all, cause, like, I don't see where, like, this offseason where y'all really got better at any position. Like, what position did the Cowboys get better at this year? Now, if Diggs come back, you could say with him and Bland, y'all could, like, really have an elite level secondary with Michael Parsons in a, in a contract year. I mean, you could say that, but I don't know. 
He said probably Caleb because Penix won't get enough playing time. He said probably Caleb Williams. He said for the Titans, I got you. Bo Nix is going to be another Brock Purdy. I think Bo Nix is like, Bo, my only problem is, is when I was saying about Bo Nix is because they paying the Steelers $38 million to play Russ. Imagine if the Broncos have 40 million free. They don't lose Justin Simmons. Let's say they wanted to move on from Jerry Judy and they still got Troy Franklin and uh, whatchamacallit. What could the Broncos do with an extra $40 million worth of players if they didn't if they didn't have to pay Russ. So imagine like the Broncos could have went for Ayuk or T Higgins. So imagine the Broncos would have had T Higgins, Sutton, Mims, Troy Franklin, uh, Bo Nix, Zach Wilson, still had Simmons, Sertan, like bro, you'd be like, ooh, we, but the Falcon, the Falcons and the Broncos did the same thing. They both got 40 to $45 million tied up in something that's not their future. Russell Wilson is clearly on the Steelers and Kirk Cousins is furious and the Falcons and every Falcon fan knows and eight in and, and less somewhere between now and 18 months, Michael Penick jr. Is the, is the, is the face of the Falcons franchise. Everybody knows it. And it's just a, it's just a countdown ticker. And it's kind of a spooky situation to be in, uh, because you know, I mean, think about it. The, the giants could have took a different direction. They could have drafted one of these QBs, but they couldn't because they got all that money tied up in the Daniel Jones. So then they picking Malik neighbors like, and who cares if they got Malik neighbors and Jalen Hyatt, they could beat everybody on the outside of Daniel Jones is throwing picks. I like Jalen Hyatt. I don't think they give him the ball a lot enough. Cause it's Daniel Jones. Like who like, bro, they got, bro, they got Jalen Hyatt, Malik neighbors and Darren Waller and they can't get him the ball. Cause Daniel Jones is, 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 is like, this just ain't good. He said, and Zach is the problem. He too greedy. Back. But just the thing though, let me ask y'all a serious question. Take the name plate off and say it ain't Dak and say it's Tony Romo. Do you think he's fighting to get his money? That's what we got to be careful at. If Derek Carr and Daniel Jones and Kirk Cousins and Ryan Tannehill can get paid sight unseen coming off an injury, Dak Prescott played better than Kirk Cousins last year. And this is a contract year. Nobody, like nobody can debate that Dak Prescott had his best year as a pro last year. And he's saying, I want to get paid. And he's watching Kirk cousins get $180 million with a hundred guaranteed coming off uh, ACL surgery at 36. You can't be mad at Dak for wanting to get a contract. I mean, every time the playoffs are, I don't that know. Ain't what I'm, that every time the playoffs, playoffs, Derek Carr, Daniel Jones and, and Kirk cousins combined has two playoff wins in 36 years of uh, playing football. How many wins that got in the playoffs? He got Dak by himself has more wins than all of, all three of them combined, and that's well, and that's hey. how bad, and that's and that's how like they they've won playoff games with Dak Prescott. They ain't went far, but we talking about guys that's played. Derek Carr ain't never had a playoff win. Daniel Jones has one, and Kirk Cousins has one. Come on, yeah, it ain't, it ain't many. Look, look, C.J. Stroud got as many playoff <laughs> wins as them. So I'm saying. Dak Prescott not want wrong for for wanting a contract because the Raiders paid Derek Carr and traded you how to him. Vibe. They paid him, benched him, and traded him, and traded him to yeah. a team he wanted to go to. Right. Tez walk on the Ravens. He said, "Bring back Austin Hooper." No, I'm good on Austin Hooper. See, that's the thing, Calvin. Is like people can't just say Dak Prescott is like Dak Prescott had a career year last year. I would I would argue that Jared Goff and Dak Prescott underratedly had some of the best years in in in, in, in Brock Purdy. Like when Brock Purdy's time to get paid, I don't think he should have to be looking over his shoulder should he get paid or not. You pay Garoppolo, you just wasted money on Trey Lance and draft picks. See, that's my thing is like Dak shouldn't have to fight for his contract. Because I think it's more to do with the Cowboys just messing up. You see what I'm saying? Now I did say I wouldn't have paid Zeke and Dak because you can't give a running back 18 million and, th- and then give 40 million to a quarterback. But the quarterback, the running back you gave 18 million to is coming back for nothing. Like it's no reason why Dak Prescott shouldn't have a contract. This is the problem. 
because he holding the franchise hostage. Get him a long-term deal, and if it don't work, he'll get traded somewhere. They don't want to give him a long-term deal, but Kirk Cousins just got a deal coming off an of injury. Daniel Jones got a deal. Derek Carr got a deal. Like, all these quarterbacks that, like, bro, two is probably finna get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, all these, Justin Herbert is going to make almost $60 million this year, and he's never won a playoff game. He choked a, a four-touchdown lead to the Jaguars at home. But you're not going to look at Justin Herbert the way you look at Dak Prescott, and that's what Dak Prescott is saying. Like, at least I, at least I deserve to get paid, if nothing else. Because McCarthy ain't getting an extension, and I don't think he should get one. You see what I'm saying? Like, I'm not talking about the coach. We're talking about a QB that was top five in the league last year statistically and, and game play-wise. I mean, Daniel Jones averaged 15 passing touchdowns the first four years of his career. What quarterback can get a $160 million contract averaging 15 passing touchdowns a year for four years? He said Titan, QB. Ryan Tannehill had more playoff wins than, than all of those guys combined. That's not that's not a, that's not a debate. Let me teach you how to vibe. Guess what? Will Levis in one year got the same amount of playoff wins as Derek Carr. And he's one away from Kirk Cousins and Daniel Jones for 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 1.5 million. That's the big difference. You said Jones got one win. Purdy Purdy probably got a handful of wins. I'm not listening to you unless your team got less Super Bowls. Look at this guy. This man, you know, two times I'm I'm saying like y'all would be so much better if you never gave Daniel Jones the contract is what I'm saying. Like the Bo Nix pick in the future, we're not going to think about it. You know what I'm saying? Well, we're not going to think about it in the future. If it worked, you just mad that the, they just got to be mad that they paying, uh, but at best case scenario, best case scenario, the Steelers could take Russ and Russ could have a decent year. I E Eagles drafted Jalen Hurts, traded Carson Wentz to the Colts, had a good year with the Colts, Played 75% of his games. They got a first round draft pick out of it. The Eagles paid Wentz first year in the Colts. And in the second year, the Colts picked it up and the Eagles already had their guy. So best case scenario, the Broncos could do what the Eagles did, which is sacrifice a year, get better as a team. And then next year, the board is cleared. You know what I'm saying? Like that could have been a way to clear up the whole Russell Wilson debacle in the best personal fashion is because Bo, getting Bo Nix and Troy Franklin kind of work out for them. Because reality is, I don't think Bo Nix will beat out uh, Zach Wilson in camp. I don't think so. Yo, John David, Kevin, was popping. I don't think he'll beat him. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, that's that's just, that's just me. He said no more run on first down eight-man box. Oh, for sure. So I mean that that's that's where we at in this draft. That's that's where these teams is at. I think teams that got worse this offseason, Cardinals, Cowboys, um, teams that got better. I don't know how the Chiefs got better, but they did. Because you gotta remember, Chiefs still have money free from not paying Sneed. Chiefs still have money free. Chiefs could still go out and get another veteran corner. And they got uh worthy Hollywood and Rasheed Rice will be back at some point. Like, I don't know how they do it, but they got better. The Eagles got better. The Bills is kind of fringe. I don't know what the Bills entail. I think the Rams found a way to plug and play. I feel like um the commanders got better. Uh every team in the NFC North and AFC South got better. Uh I'm interested to see like how the Bucks are gonna play this offseason. I don't really know what their vision is, but you know, the Bucks always get like diamonds in the rough. The Saints, I feel like the Saints defense is gonna be nice. But once again, like they're gonna be back to figuring out like what how far can Derek Carr take them? And I don't think that's very far. I want to see the Panthers with like now that Bryce Young has got some weapons. I don't know what the offensive line looks like. Um the the revamp NFC North with Deshaun Watson and Joe Burrow healthy. Uh Ravens seem to be the cream in the crop of that division. The Steelers got better, had a Steelers had an incredible offseason. The Browns, I don't know how they did it, but the Browns, even with having to pay 
Deshaun Watson 60 something million dollars. Like I don't, they, they still improved their roster. They still got Jerry Judy. They still added uh tight ends to their roster. I, I, I don't know how they did it. Um, but just look overall and see like a lot of teams got better. Uh, I think the Patriots, uh, I want to see like what their direction is with Drake May, Joe Milton and Jacoby Brissett. Um, the Raiders, I feel like got a lot better. The Chargers is going to be interesting to see what Harbaugh wants to do. Obviously, he's going up front. He restructured Bosa and Khalil Mack. Um, bringing in uh, Joe Alt at left tackle, booking tackles the last couple of drives. Um, the Jets, is Aaron Rodgers healthy? Adding Mike Williams, uh, offensive tackle, a couple of players. Like, how did the Jets look this year? I don't know, man. It's going to be interesting to watch the NFL. Uh, but I, I do say the Cardinals and Cowboys, I don't know what they're doing. I don't. I, I think a team that's going to surprisingly be better depending on Daniel Jones and like the, the, the Giants defense, like they added some, some monsters. I, I ain't gonna lie, but I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see like, cause the Daniel Jones thing is, is gone. I feel like the saints, the, the giants, a few teams are going to be hindered by their QB. The Falcons is going to be interesting to watch. Is Kirk Cousins going to come back healthy? Is he going to be mad and try to force a trade? Uh, is how, how long will it be before Penix is the, the starter in Atlanta? Um, I don't know, man. It's going to be interesting. He said Eagles had, they had a good draft. I ain't going to say the best. Like they got positions of need, but bro, the bears cleaned up this off season. The, the Rams had a really good draft. Uh, uh, the Vikings had horrible like selections, like with the, the place they were in and still wind up fixing a team. Um, lions had a good, another good draft. I don't know, man. It's, it's some teams that got better, bro. I, I ain't going to say Eagles had the best. I'm going to say Eagles had a good one, but it's some teams that really got some, uh, you said Patriots is still a question mark, but I mean, I like the direction they're going. Like they, they, they had a definitive move. They traded Mac Jones. They brought in Brissett to be a veteran starter that they familiar with. You go get, uh, Drake may and Joe Milton. You got a quarterback battle. Um, they drafted, I mean, the, the Patriots could still be the team that pushed for Ayuka T Higgins too. I mean, I I like the, I think the Raiders is a team that's, that could be dangerous too. I think right. Brock Bowers, Meyer, uh, the run game, Tay, Christian Wilkinson, Max Crosby. Like, I don't know, man, the, the Raiders had a really good, uh, it's some teams I'm excited about what they did. I mean, Calvin, put it like this. In October, he hurt the ACL. By the time the new season start, it'll be around nine or ten months from his from his surgery to to starting. We ain't talking about him being able to work right now in spring. We ain't talking about him being able to really work for real in summer with the ones. We ain't talking about team camp. We saying like in October, it'll be a year from surgery. And you think about ACL and how long it takes to work back. I don't know if Kirk Cousins is ready to start the season and see that they, 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 they schedule is soft up front in the early part of the schedule. So let's say they, let, let's, let's say they, they, they have a veteran come in and a veteran play good until Kirk Cousins back. Or let's say Michael Penix just dazzles them in the off season. And this Michael Penix start. If Michael Penix got them in a winning record, the first four, five, six games of the season, do you even bother to put Kirk Cousins into the lineup? See, Titans, we had the opposite. T- Tannehill was 35 coming off a high ankle sprain. Tannehill had the same surgery as Mahomes. Mahomes came, won a Super Bowl on his and came back and won another Super Bowl. Tannehill never looked like, bro, go look, uh, bro, I promise you, just go look at uh, Twitter and type in uh, Titans uh, mini camp last year. He couldn't do the drills right. Early part of the season, he couldn't step up and throw the football. In the pocket, he looked like a baby deer. You know what I'm saying? Like, being 36 coming off a of surgery like that, bro, it might take him six, seven months before he can really get into rhythm. And that's halfway through the season. If Penix is playing good, then he might not make it back. You know what I'm saying? That's like, not going to happen, bro. Kirk Cousins is a starter. Bro, I'm saying like, we, like, bro, we're talking about less than a year from an ACL to repair it and be 100% to play football, bro. 
Yeah, he's already out. He's already out doing. He's already reported and doing the voluntary workouts. That's what I'm saying. Voluntary workout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I seen Tannehill do it when it was time for them live reps. He just didn't look the same, bro. Like being able to. You remember on the on the Netflix show on the Vikings how much work he had done to his body that season when he started getting. Oh beat yeah, up? he was getting he was getting smoked. I'm yeah. saying like they you talking about 35, 36. This ain't a 25, 26 year old QB. Yeah. He looked at ginger on the Vikings. You see what I'm saying? Halfway through the season. Imagine an ACL on top of that and playing in a new on a new team. Yeah. I don't know, man. We we we're gonna find out though. Because he gonna be like a, a monkey on his back to get back out there and he might hurt himself doing it. We have seen it happen before. And now he's gonna be looking over his shoulder, making sure trying not to throw picks and shit. Yeah. Who Second knows, he throws man, a pick, this... bro, I could see the fans being like, boo, Ooh, bro, I could just see it now. I mean, it's been this has been a great offseason, man. Uh I'm definitely interested on in my Titans, man, to see new offensive line, new offensive scheme, new offensive minded coach. Um not running the ball every first down. 2000 yard receivers. How will Traylon Burks look on the slot? Uh will they still go out and get a veteran tight end? How will these free agent uh undrafted free agents do? Um will Jaquan push Kyle Phillips out and be a return man slot receiver? Will uh, the Titans get Justin Simmons to play free safety across from Amani Hooker, Cheetah Bay, Awuzie, Legereus Sneed, Roger McCurry, Brownlee, Caleb Farley, Ed Corner, the best group of corners I've seen in Nashville in a long time. James Williams, 6'4 safety that's going to play that like hybrid linebacker safety role. Gray coming in at that weak side backer with Gibbons and then having uh Murray to play the strong linebacker, Odie Reese. I'm interested, bro. Like Harold backing up Landry, Caleb Murphy and Arden key to Vondre sweat, big Jeff, Sebastian, Joseph day, Colburn. Like, bro, it's the best. It's the best like talent wise Titans have looked coming into the season. And we, we still have like 30, 40 million free. So, I mean, imagine Justin Simmons coming in, imagine them getting, another one of these guys uh uh in in there like it could, it, it could get spicy i mean look, this would be a long i i, I love d hop i want to keep d hop but what if what if what if the titans do push the trade and t higgins is in nashville reuniting with his oc t higgins get over there with d hop and calvin really <laughs> It could get it, it could get out of control for some teams, but still yet and still the team to be in the AFC is the Chiefs, Xavier Worthy. <sighs> Hollywood Brown, Rasheed Rice, Travis Kelsey, Pacheco. Uh you know what I'm saying NFC. The Niners is the Niners, but I gotta see what else they're gonna do with this Ayuk deal. Tad has ensured me that Ayuk ain't going nowhere, even though they drafted Pierce Hall. Uh, I feel like the Rams got better. Even though Aaron Donald is gone, it's about as best as they could. Seahawks, I don't know what they're going to do, like, long-term. Cardinals is, uh, you know what I'm saying? Packers look good, like they've improved. The Lions look good, like they've improved. The Vikings have gotten better. Amazingly, I don't know how they was able to, but they are. Uh, And, you know, the Bears have made a lot of moves. It's going to be interesting, man, like, it, 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 there's no clear cut favorite right now. I mean, the Eagles, Saquon Barkley, Devontae Smith, AJ Brown, Dallas Goddard, sheesh. And their biggest holes was cornerback, and they just went and got Cooper DeGene and Quinion Mitchell, which I think DeGene is going to play free safety, but geez, man. CD Deuce coming back. I, I don't know, man. It's some teams that just like, <laughs> like, what is really going on out here? All right, y'all. It's been real.